Uh, yep. So, start of 2024. Up, we're doing the tier lists again. Just because, like, there isn't much going on. It, it does suck that I got to wait to partake in any greenery until after this stuff is done. But, uh, people like watching this, so I'm going to keep making them. One big difference, so the rules for the tier list are pretty much the same. Uh, all units are copy are like held at the same level or standard. Uh, this one is going to be the exception and the next one because it's welfares and low stars. These are all assumed MP5 and level 80 maxed out skills. I moved the welfares off of the normal tier list because it really wasn't fair to compare an MP5 Saber Hokusai to an MP1 Saber Lancelot. Uh, I think it's greatly misleading and completely violates the point of a tier list if the units aren't held at the same level. Other addition is this A plus tier. What is this for? This is, so the, oh, this should be EX. Okay. This is so, this one does not get loaded. EX is supposed to be the best of the best for the category. It is not supposed to have three different units that are all super good and get the job done like effectively, but there's still a gap between how good they are. For any one category, only one unit can go into EX, and I'm going to try to keep this consistent with all future tier lists this year. And the category is like card type and then also uh, function, like single target, AOE. But if a unit has a very specific or they are so good at their role, like Castoria, like so good at being a support, obviously she's going to be going in EX. Um, and this is comparing to class type. I'm not going to compare Saber Nero or Nero Bride to Castoria. That is not what I'm doing. All right, so we are going to go into a release order for this. Just because release order makes it a little more interesting and you see the buffs as they go on. And also, I believe if I do it release order, it's not going to get the weird stuff where I do, like say I do it by ID. It, yeah, like this. It, it, so this doesn't happen. Because I do not need to be doubling up on units. So, the first unit we start with is Caster Ellie. Caster, like, this is the first welfare, so obviously things are not going to look good. Especially compared to the later stuff on the tier list. This is not going to look good. Base attack's okay. And also, uh, I will try to... No, no, no. We're not going to go super in-depth on these tier list videos. Save that for uh, the actual certain review when they get it by themselves. I give them like 10, 15, 20 minutes each. I don't have that kind of time. So, attack, low. But caster. So it's even lower. Charge gen, we don't care. MP charge, 1.6, but the hit count is dog shit. If you don't credit on this, you are, like, miserable. You're not going to get much refund. This buff had the potential to make Caster Ellie a four-star version of Ku Caster, which technically she actually did need. Thing is, they screwed her on it. Um, th like, 
yeah. So stars return, HP heal, and it's decent. Removes the latest buff. Uh, if you remove the buff, happy Halloween. Each one reduces crit attack chance, and she gets a twenty percent battery based on how many uh, enemies have happy Halloween. Basically, how many different people she debuffed. If you are fighting six enemies that all have a debuff, this goes up to 120% battery. Sounds cool. Unfortunately, you're never going to be able to take advantage of that because the best use case is unironically using Kiyohime, either one of them, to buff the enemy and then you remove that shit. This unit could have been really, really cool and would have kept pace. But issue is she's a welfare. They've given her out so many times. They're not going to make a unit stronger than Kukaster at, at Black Rail Looping. It's just not going to happen. This is a mana burst, and it's one time. Not that good. Uh, in Double Vich, she can reset the cooldown, though. And pop this on turn two and three. This is a uh thirty percent battery on a seven turn cooldown. This means you have to start with super scope. You do not have the option. Thus, your damage is scuffed. Is she able to do double bitch Oberon though? Yes. Is she gonna be able to do it that well? I mean, she's not double stacking any buffs. Yeah, like if you look at her entire kit. Nothing can be double stacked with double vich. So she kind of loses that value of using double vich. The, the whole point of double vich is to be popping your offensive skills twice so you get more damage. If you're not double popping, is there really that much of a difference between doing double vich or double Oberon? Not really, besides the fact that double vich has better has better uh wave one and two then uh just wave three all right see you gabby passives are basic welfare so we're not yeah we're, so because this is welfares we're not really talking about a pens besides third of pen unless they need unless mana loading is part of it but they're welfares you're gonna have the servant coins. They're all on the equal on an equal playing field for this. So for throughout the seer list, or at least just the welfare one, we are only focused on third append. I am going to assume that all even the appends are maxed out for this tier list. Even the appends, which one is valuable? Lancer, I mean against OG Ellie. And then also Kiyohime, but like this is this the this doesn't help her. MP isn't buffed. That again hurts her in double bitch or double overrun uh terms. She's not this unit isn't gonna do good damage. If you're expecting her to be welfare coup caster, you are sadly mistaken. She is not gonna be doing it. She is still functional, though. She is still very functional. Uh, and for MP damage. Yeah. Like, not only is she actually out damaged by Kukast. But like every other, like she's out damaged by three stars. She is being compared to three stars with a fucking mana burst. This third skill needs to be buffed or her MP, either one. I'm really hoping though it's this one first because my God, my God. If she wants double vich, she needs this, but in general, the MP buff would be desired too. She just needs more damage.
And where are you? All right. I'm putting her at C because she's not unusable. She can still do farming. She's just not good at it. Like you'll have better options elsewhere. And at least she has the battery. Some of some of the three stars don't have the battery on this. Like I don't think Babbage has a battery. So he can't do uh, farming unless you're throwing in like Chloe or something. She can at least do normal setup. Again, damage isn't going to be good, but she can do them. And that for me, it like, that's bare minimum for farmer. Bare minimum. Because I can't see using her in anything else but farming. Like this, no. Like if damage is a problem in farming, why would I bring her to a challenge quest? So bare minimum, you can actually do farming and you get C. But other than that, like, yeah. Next up, Nobunaga. The OG Nobunaga. Base attack. On the average, looking pretty good though. 9.5k. HP lower to compensate. Uh, star weight, Sargent, Archer, MP charge 0.43, but four hits. So I'm willing to give the pass on this because this is like decent or for an Archer because they're supposed to be critting on it. Hit counts, especially for year one. Like, this is. This is literally November. Yeah, this is November of 2015. So super, super early in the game. And they released her with decent hit count. It took them a long ass time for them to get that right. Two hits on quick. It really doesn't matter. She's an archer. She's not even supposed to be genning stars. But upstairs looks decent for her age. This was such a good buff when she came out. This is a great multi-core buff. And that's how I'm going to rank her as a multi-core. This is not a buster farmer. She is there to nuke one enemy. And that's pretty much it. So party buster and MP damage. This is really big for multi-core, uh, especially because of Oberon. Like any kind of MP damage source immediately gets more value if it's party wide for a multi-core. Power mod against the Vinny. If she's just doing multi-core, this is fine. If she was an AoE farmer, yeah, I would want this to be three turns, but she's not. And then star weight, crit damage. I wouldn't say this is the best multi-core use, but if she, Nobu needs to be doing single target, at least they, uh, she has her own crit damage. At least, like, if their star is about and she has to crit, she's at least going to like do decent damage. Or be able to get the stars to do decent damage. He is, after all, an archer. 600% star weight for an archer is a lot. That's a lot to get them to crit. Magic resist B, 17.5%. And independent action B for even more crit damage. Her anti pend is archers. Oh, right. I forgot she's all enemy. She's not a single target. Okay. Um, yeah, then I take back some stuff. I still think multi-core is where she'll see the most use because she does not have a battery. Um, but the combo of the append with this means she has very very strong effective use case 
because a lot of saber servants have writing. A lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, forty-one. Forty-one sabers out of ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-four, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-two. Eighty percent of sabers. Eighty percent. She gets super effective damage, along with being class advantage. And then go to divinity. One, two, three, eight, eight, thirteen. No, uh, fourteen. Fourteen sabers have divinity as uh, and probably there is. Definitely some overlap between a being a divine saber and our saber with writing. Her numbers can spike up very high. And the thing is, she's not even she doesn't need to hit only sabers for this. Like these are wide reaching niches that start bordering single target damage. So again, against a saber, this is going to be like 138,000 damage with just her own buffs. Everyone else, I mean, it's single target damage at the very least, but I'm praising this servant. I really am. I might be gassing her up just a little bit. Do I think she needs more buffs? Absolutely. 100% she needs more. I can see them buffing this or the MP. I do not see them buffing the second skill anytime soon. I do think she's going to be best in multi-core with a single target. But it's... Yeah, MP damage is applicable anywhere, and Buster up works for Buster crits. She's at least a step above Liz. She's a farmer, and but her damage is shit. She's not a farmer, but technically you can make her farm. I think like, see, like doing whether these units can farm or not is a lot harder because of summer chloe because summer chloe can make most units actually be able to three turn uh damage might not be super great but you could still do it so just because someone can farm does not mean that they're gonna be elevated for it like i know ellie he's here at c actually actually yeah let's bring this down d because we're comparing MP5 welfares, not normal servants. If if I did not change the tier list up, she would be in C. But because of this, she's in D. She's only being this is only being compared to other welfares. All right. Next, Santa Alter. Hit count is dog shit. Base attack is okay. They built her because she's a rider. She's supposed to be critting on this, but there's a huge issue with Salter, uh, Santa Alter. It is literally Artoria, OG Artoria's hit counts. They ripped it. And they did nothing, considering Ryder. First skill, star gen and a light heal. 15 stars. Like, instinct is... She is the only unit, I think, with instinct that has not had it buffed. 
Like, literally, she is the only one. If we ever get evocation for her, this is probably what her skill buff will be. They will probably buff this, even though other stuff needs work. So I hope that skill buff is going to be really, really good. One turn mana burst. Again, outdated. That That is Santa Alter in a nutshell. She is outdated. Debuff resist riding. Our mod against Sabres. Just talk about Nobu, and Nobu actually would do better because A, Archer, B, that riding power mod. She gets more out of it. Damage to all enemies with the same Salter scuff modifier and a 10% battery. Technically, she can do double over on farming. Should you do it? Oh, excuse me. No. She wouldn't work with double bitch. She would have to be double over on end of discussion. Like, she has no buffs. MP damage. Rider, AOE, 33, not bad, but that is with a 50% mana burst. Nemo, she out damages Nemo Santa, but Nemo Santa has a niche and his arts. So he gets all the benefits and can start from zero with no, with very little problem. Like he doesn't have to worry about refund. Not nearly as much as Salter or Santa Alter. There is just better options. I'm not, and I'm not even talking about this. Like, this unit doesn't, like, this unit almost needs a rework, not even buffs, because it's going to take too long for them to fix this character. How fucking crazy is it that I'm saying any Artoria is worse than Ellie? Do not use this character. You will not like, I can't even use the multi-core argument like Nobu because she doesn't have anything that's worth like nothing. No value. She makes stars and she gets a mana burst. That's it. Don't use her. Lily. This is an unfortunate case where she has three star stats because of how they originally released her. They gave her three star stats with a four star cost. How fucked is that? Yes. Every FGO player can have an Artoria face, no matter how much you play. But my God, they did this unit so dirty. Why is her? Why are they keeping her base attack this low? Attack isn't everything, but like this is the start of all your scaling. And no matter what buffs you give her, this is always going to be a hindrance. She's never going to be like that good of a farmer, and. Salter is a much better farmer. Salter got one buff, and it doesn't have nearly any of the issues that we see here, or we're going to see here. Normal Artoria numbers, same hit counts, no point in talking about it. This is pretty much the same. Again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, only if she crits, and it, good luck doing that. It's not that. It's not going to be that easy. Skill buff, fifteen stars, twenty battery, healing. She can do. Yeah, she can do double Oberon or Chloe, or like put Chloe in here. One second. Mana burst for a turn. So. Yeah, you're not even going to want to do double bitch because you're not double stacking anything that actually matters. 
Double Vich isn't going to do anything besides you having better consistent turns. Cast your enemy append. I I could see it. I could see it happening. They made her out. Okay, so she has healing. She has this, which would be good for multi core if they buffed it and gave it some offense. If they gave her like more offensive capability for the party, I could I could see it like an a like they turn this into like a prisma uh prisma of the flowers or some shit, and they give this twenty percent. Then she's double stacking something. But right now. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're comparing MP5s to MP5s, not MP5s to MP1. She needs at least one more buff before I can rank her higher. Cheeky. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Cheeky we get to have fun with. Uh, One sec. Just double checking whether she actually has any competition here or not. Any direct competition, I should say. And the answer to that is no, there is no other single target assassin here. So, not only is Shiki the only one in her class here, but she's arts and has decent hit counts. Not the best, definitely not the best, but they're at least usable for the time she came out. Because she's arts, um, getting back to her MP isn't going to be an issue, uh, especially if you're plug suiting. This is lower because she's an assassin, but she can put out really good damage. Like this is another. This is a case where attack isn't everything. Uh, if you just slap black rail on her, she's just gonna like pop off. Her MP5 is comparable to five star assassins with MP buffs, which I mean makes sense because her MP has been buffed. So, unless you have uh, MP2 of any of these units, Shiki is going to out damage them and just be more consistent. And unlike Lee Shuen, she has better hit counts to follow up and get back to her MP. Like, her most direct comparison is Li Shuen, but I think, like, just her kit in general just, like, fits uh, more scenarios. All right, so... Upstairs looks good. 50% arts up, invincibility, insta-kill res. Because she can put the insta-kill res, she has more utility in instances where you can actually insta-kill. There have been multiple 90 plus plus nodes where insta-kill was a legit thing you would be doing uh, and would save you so much... Uh, time and investment trying to like battery up uh one of your units eye of mind false is the one of the few times i have ever ever seen this skill buff like they do not buff eye of mind true or false this is the first time uh, like this is the first time they've done it for false and I'm not sure if they even have done it for true either. 
But they added a 40 star bomb to this, and that was it. But she's an assassin, an arts assassin. She's not going to have stars unless you make her have stars. This essentially is another battery because these are guaranteed to crit. And in arts teams, if you let those roided out arts cards from Castoria crit, they're going to go, their gauge is going to go up dramatically. Her MP itself is going to like benefit from this because you can do a mighty chain and these quick cards are pretty good. Four hits at point eight. And a mighty chain, your extra attack will do really good damage. And she has a 30 battery, but she does, deals a thousand damage to herself. With mana loading, she starts from 50. Simple as that. And extra, extra damage against Avengers. Uh, unless you have a Moon Cancer or Berserker, this is probably one of your better options in terms of uh, nailing the coffin on them. Because Avengers do not have survivability. And with Shiki having Pierce Invul, like whatever literal survivability they have, usually a dodge or an invul, not, not really guts. She's just going to bypass it and just kill them. And her MP has been buffed, ignores defense, and reduces uh, defense 20%. It has little note about how in skill works. But if you're actively trying to insta-kill, you're going to want the overcharge up higher. Uh, it will just boost your chances. So for right now, because I'm on the fence, I'm putting her an A+. Plus for potential for EX because she doesn't have direct competition right now. She just doesn't. I might do this throughout all the lists if I'm either waiting for more of them to be done, uh, more units to get ranked, and then I'll start moving, adjust, making adjustments. But I think Shiki with this buff, just like, she doesn't start slow. And that, for a lot of units, that's a big thing. Quick units before Summer Scotty, they all started slow as fuck if they did not have star bombs for themselves, or you had to bring star bomb CEs for it. Iris feel. This is a healer. She heals really, really well. But so much, you do not need it. She is actually able to do some solo stuff because of like how much she heals. But that requires a lot more investment. Her gains are shit because of triple arts. If you are if she's soloing and you're not just spamming triple arts, you're not gonna refund. I feel her HP could have been higher too. Because we've seen three stars with four, uh five star HP. Like, this is even low for a four-star. Not low for a four-star, but, like, she should have five-star level HP if her attack is this slow. Like, borderline three-star. Like, slightly higher than the Lily. The accounts overall aren't terrible, though. Yeah, so this is the buff. 50% battery, MP damage, healing up 100%. So... If she's able to start healing, she is going to heal a lot. And this lasts for three turns. Big difference from one. Um, and I like the joke they did. Cup of Heaven. And it's rank E. Uh, showing what Kiritsugu gets to hold in his uh, broken hands. And at least Prisma Ilya. Not in, other, not in other roots. Or, I mean, he did. But, I mean, did he really how much did he enjoy it when he's literally suffering next skill invul mp gen she needs hard survivability just because you can heal super well doesn't help if you just die and targeted healing of 3k for five turns you're probably going to pop this on herself though 
arts up, debuff resist and slight damage, but you're not you don't care about doing damage. Damage against Avengers again. Um she's not doing damage, so this doesn't matter. And her MP gives everyone in the party a guts. So as long as she can keep spamming her MP, she can get the guts. Every time the guts is about to go away, or once the guts is gone, you just pop this again and try to get back to an MP. Very similar to how you'd use Castoria. Except Castoria is straight up better, because why give this survivability when you can just not take damage in the first place. The thing about guts though is they cannot it cannot be removed with uh defensive buff removal. It has to be all buff removal, which solemn defense is defensive. Guts would stay. It is a point I just want to point uh lay out just because there are cases you'd need a guts like against I'm a no uh, I'm a Kusa bad example. Um, Saber Okita Okitan, so, like Summer Okitan, that constantly spams MP and removes uh buffs or defensive buffs. This guts would stay Ugh. on the case that she just one shots you. Just like last time, I'm gonna put her in extremely niche. Because you're not going to need healing like this in most cases for FGO. The way the game has developed this character, if you need the guts proc, that's what her battery is for. But how often are you going to need the guts proc? And her other competition is Asclepius, but the difference between her and Asclepius is Asclepius is doing looping support as well. But he himself is not getting the guts. That's a big thing. She is way tankier than Asclepius. But Asclepius also has other utility. Next up, Kintoki Rider. Just like Shiki, I have very, very uh, like good association with the servant. I use the servant for um, storm pods on the what is it, caster Ellie node before better nodes came out. If I needed a single target to like farm up bomb points while also getting a couple uh, pieces, caster pieces. This is my go-to because he could start from zero with a bond C and still comfortably be three turning it. Now for storm pods, I don't care about one shotting. I don't. I care about three turning them because saying a, a unit is bad because they can't output a stupid amount of damage in one turn when they're not using black rail isn't an argument for me. For those one enemy storm pod nodes, I always plan for a three turn. As long as the unit can do the three turn, like consistently, we're good. Kentoki is like all about that. Unless you get full bricked on your starting hand, he's more likely than not doing it. And with Ruler Scotty, he does not have this uh, slow startup. And you also don't need triple Scotty for, for what I'm talking about. One caster, one ruler, and just Kentoki and Mystic Code kind of doesn't matter, and you're good to go. Base attack is good starting point. Very, very low HP. This is like almost Berserker level, which, I mean, considering his original class is Berserker, makes sense. But he kind of epitomizes Quick. Uh, even though, like, Quick does have a little more st staying power than Buster. Um, but that's a completely different argument. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Star weight, star gen, rider numbers, MP charge 1.15 with these type of hit counts. Like these quick cards are arts cards for other units. 
for a lot of art servants, these quick cards will refund just as much as their arts cards. Arts card re arts card here is just mostly for mighty chains at this point. Uh to use Buster uh MP Arts Buster or if you need the refund MP Buster Arts. Uh and extra attack is five hits. His upstairs for a year one servant looks phenomenal. 30% quit up quick up, 50% star gen. I feel at this point they could buff it, but it's not the biggest thing because this is only on a five turn. If this was a six turn cooldown skill, 100% this would need to be buffed, buffed it in some way, probably to give him more damage. But Sargen, I mean, like for a rider, this does make more sense because he doesn't have the highest base Sargen chance. He's not a foreigner, a moon cancer, a pretender, or assassin. So his Sargen is going to be scuffed as a quick servant. He's going to want his star gen to be good. 50% battery. And then this is a skill that actually needs to be buffed. Like offensive buff, be buff resistance three times. Cool. But the thing is, we have seen this skill be buffed twice. Altera had this skill buffed twice kentoki is the only unit that has natural body that has not had it buffed both forms of him need to get the skill buffed like it's shown with altera like slapping star weight on this skill isn't enough you need to do something else now for them they can't do batteries because they already have batteries but offense like, OG Kentoki could use, like, a three-turn buster buff. This one could use a three-turn attack buff. Not Still good. Anti-Berserker. Awesome append to have. Instantly brings up his value because it makes him better at fighting class he is already fighting. Oh, shit. We're in Honkai. Uh, I just realized that... That uh, counter explains a lot. Okay. So, MP. Four hit, single target, and ramps up quick. Uh, one time, activates first. His modifier is so scuffed. This is so scuffed. But the... <sighs> His floor is super low, but his ceiling is ridiculously high. If you're running, if you're able to do any kind of overcharge, especially your Mystic Code, there are a couple that work with him that can give overcharge. You're going to see a dramatic increase in damage. And I think some of those Mystic Codes also, one of them at least has MP gain and damage. So, yeah. This scaling is awesome, but I do think his MP needs a buff. Single target. He is carried. He is definitely carried by the fact that he is MP5. 100% he's carried by that fact. And if they buff his MP, he is going to be hitting harder than the five stars. So that is probably why they don't want to give him an MP buff. Murasaki got an MP buff. And he still out damaged her. Except that MP2. After MP2, it, it's, it's over. It's just over. So... I only see them buffing. Yeah, I only see them buffing his MP if they buff other four stars MPs as well. Five stars. Eh, yeah, five stars need like. Ozzy is in a good in probably the best place, but these numbers show that like you are. 
like these single target riders need MP buffs, but in general, riders need damage buffs. They a lot of them just don't hit hard enough. Considering they're supposed to be fighting casters, I mean it makes sense, but it's still annoying. Kintoki, just like Shiki, is going in A plus. Because this is a whole bunch of different class servants, uh, single target quick are all going in the same umbrella. So Kintoki would be directly to compare to Saika, Magoichi, and Satanta. So con like concert, you all of them would fall under the same umbrella. It's not one welfare quick uh, rider goes here. No, 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 no. So again, that's why I'm hesitant to put anything in EX right now, especially these earlier welfares. They are solid. I don't think they're EX right now. I need to see their competition. And single target riders is stiff, but not single target buster. Well, uh, well, now it is. Now it's, it got a lot uh, tougher competition. We'll get to that later. Shisho Assassin. Yeah. Um, this unit can loop. They're not that good at it. And yeah, let's get further into it. Uh, 9k attack. It's okay. 11.1k HP. Again, not the worst, but this still is pretty low. Average hit counts across the board with a triple quick deck. So making stars is not a problem, or it shouldn't be. Battery, crit damage, power mod against divinity. This is what she needed. Now she is... Pretty much single target with splash damage on the MP, and it just the MP just mostly gen stars. Heal with damage cut for one turn. I mean, this can this is decent survivability, but it's like really soft survivability. Like this is not gonna stop anyone from like dying to a stray crit. It's just not. And third skill. Ignore invincibility for one turn and quick up 50%. Passive is nothing. She does not. This is the bare minimum and they barely could give it. Yeah, no passives. Anti-Lancer because Ku is probably peeping at women and not being upfront with his desire. So she shows going to kick the shit out of him. And NP, no normal effect. Stupidly low chance at insta kill. You're like you're never, almost never gonna see this. You're you're never gonna see this actually in skill. So MP needs a buff the most. This is this is a nothing burger. This MP truly is like a nothing burger. You're you're probably not gonna get the insta kill. And damage isn't going to be that good. Yeah. Like, this is really, really bad damage, considering she's quick. Now, I'm not taking points off because she's quick, but she doesn't have any of the buffs in her kit that quick would greatly appreciate uh as a crit servant she is a lot better like to think about like i 100 percent, i would not rank her as a farmer that is not happening she literally has direct competition if you wanted to rank her as a farmer and that and that competition just takes a giant steaming shit on this version of she show. So yeah, this this unit 
got a lot better. I would rank her as a crit servant, very much in a similar vein as Ushi Gozen, where her MP being AoE is just a side thing. It's not the biggest thing. This is where most of her damage is going to come from. Because crit damage and power mods are significant. She, I, she didn't have this. The crit damage was for one turn. Now she's an actual crit servant. So, Summer She Show. B, because of her first skills, like her usability as a crit servant. Not, again, not a farmer. I am not ranking her on being a farmer. But technically, she would work in multi-core right now. Technically. Because she would have, like, decent enough steroids. I could easily see her being lower. But that for that skill buff is just like actually really, really good. Yeah. B. Next up. A, a dangerous beast. Voiced by, uh, voiced by Tom Moe's VA is sad. Is sad that such a good VA it has to be associated with this most dangerous beast of them all. The dangerous beast that will get the FBI knocking on your fucking door. Base attack, super high for a four star. Almost pushing 10k HP low, like oh, this is borderline anemic. Like doesn't it won't take much to uh send her into gold dust. Star weight, star gen, normal archer numbers, MP charge 0.38. But the reason being is she has two six hit arts cards with an arts MP. I would have been more surprised if this gain was like 0.5 than seeing two six hit arts cards. Yeah, no, stay like that. I don't, I don't need to see a child that looks like my students doing those poses. Okay, first skill, one turn of evasion and 36% crit damage. 35% Omni card buff, which I mean now with Yui actually is something that like you could use Yui with Summer uh with Kuro and Kuro will do even better than she already does. Oh. And 50% battery. Uh 100% star gen. So, that, like, reminiscent of Emiya's Hawkeye skill buff that made hit, like, him, like, churn out so many stars, even with an arts MP. And then buff rate, success rate for Ilya allies. This is uh, all three of them, although Seton and I probably gets the biggest benefit of this. Because she normally doesn't run with people with buff success rate, but... Uh, it's for this skill. Like, these two need a uh, bonus. But these are two arts MPs, two single target arts MPs. So I don't see you actually running them together. Uh, there is. And like, the chance base for this one isn't high but this one would be buffing Kuro so out of all of them I guess Summer uh, Ilya would get the most benefit from running with uh, 
Kuro, and it was 70% in this boost set by 30. Ugh. So, Welfare with a 50% battery. Already decent. Magic Res C, 15% debuff resistance, and independent action B for crit damage. Anti Pend is Caster. I'm pretty sure this is because of Ilya. Because Ilya um, stopped her from rising up all the girls in Prisma Ilya. Based on the clips, again, I watched the first season. Was fine. Second Kuro showed up. I'm like, oh no. No, these girls, like these 10 year old girls have like orgasm faces from a kiss. Oh, fuck no. We all know what mana transfer actually is. We all know what it is. The imp like the whole like it's not what she actually does, it's the implications of what she does and the facial expressions that come after. That is what ruins Kuro for a and Prisma Ilya for a lot of people. All right, enough of that rant though. Uh MP six hit arts. Single target ignores evasion. Damage to one enemy and reduces crit attack chance for three turns, base 20. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Wait, who am I looking for? Oh, right. Uh, damage chart. Okay, and single target. Yeah, might as well just keep it here because I, I don't care about MP1. Okay, so you can already see for a welfare, she is much, much lower than she should be. Like, this is very low MP damage. Like, it's balanced by the fact that she's able to loop back. But this is a welfare that has to be compared to MP2s. Of gotcha. Yeah, no. Like a welfare should be more catered more compared to like MP3s, uh MP2 no, not MP2s of five stars. I think this is just like this is just an archer class problem, really. Uh comparing Kuro's damage to like uh, yeah. And then when you come into take into account niche, um, unironically, I think she should have an anti female. She should have anti female power mod on this fucking MP because it's Kuro, because and because it's funny. Because it's funny. Um, and if you've seen the the clips of Kuro. You would you would see it. She she renders most females unable to fight. <sighs> Elia is a fucking pervert, chat. She's a fucking pervert. Yeah, hey, what is this? Because I see this all the time. But why? Why? I don't I don't know why I see X9 with this all the time. Alright. So Kuro, much like the others, is going into A plus. Actually, no, A. She's going into A. Because without unless she gets the buff, I can't move her any higher. Wait, where are you? Wait, did I forget Kuro? Oh my god, so that's uh all right. Uh I'm just gonna have to edit this out later.
All right. Kuro, you're at A because you also can't fall back on crits. Not that easily, at least. Even though you're an archer. Like, you have crit damage, just not that much. And your card buff is only one turn. Uh, yeah, I... Kentoki can get away with it because his buff is three turns. And he's quick, so he's going to crit. Uh, Kuro, I can't make that same uh, notion. So she is being stuck in A. With, I don't even want to go into this unit that much, but I will. Base attacks, okay. You're going to see me speed run this one. Charge, 0.55. Okay, hit counts. Upstairs doesn't look too, too bad. Honestly. Yeah. Do, like, don't get my not wanting to go through that everything about this unit is bad. It's not. Upstairs is fine. If you want to technically use her as a crit servant, I could see it. But literally everything... Everything gets just so much worse after we look down. One turn invul, 50% MP gen. Cool, but why is this only one turn? This should be three turns. I don't think this would be a problem if 50% for her with these hit counts was three turns. One turn mana burst with a defense of one turn. Again. Why is this one turn? At this point, these should be three turns. And then there's this fucking skill where if you, like, if you're MP5, this is less of an issue. Because here, if you were not MP5, this would drain everything. Luckily, if you're above MP5, you can go beyond 100%. You would literally have to, like, charge her up to 150. Like, basically, if you had extra charge and you weren't, like, enough that you could pop this and you could still MP, it's not that bad. But one out of five chance to get one of these three things, like, these two would help you. These two would actually help you. This one might not help you. If you're using in a buster team, it's definitely not going to help you. You don't need this many stars. But you can't choose which one you want. And that's what screws this unit up so goddamn much. The main issue is that this is Gamba. If this was swapped with this, this unit, would, I would not have as much issues with it but you rarely would ever need any one of these things and if you need one probably would want at least one other so they'd have to buff this skill again which is a fucking waste considering like these two could use work too and if they buff this skill again up oh, another two years before they buff the other two Anti-Avenger, again. If you're fighting an Avenger and you don't have a Moon Cancer, I guess you can use this one. I just wouldn't. MP. Pierce's defense. Good normal effect to have. It's a buff single target Saber MP. We don't get too many of those. Spread a fire and burn with a baby burn. You get this unit's MP for this part and that's it that's her entire kit sixty three and she's beaten her even with this stuff she is beaten out by the other single target buster welfare and not only that Case is consistent, and he ramps up. She falls off dramatically. If you're using Brave Liz, it has to be single core. I mean, multi-core. I cannot see a purpose other than using multi-core. And if you're able to get this off, 
I mean, this is a pretty good buff to multi-core setup, but it's a one in five king chance. If they could buff this skill without actually buffing it and make it so you can choose one of these, she will become a fantastic multi-core unit. She will be much better as multi-core, but she doesn't. I'm not going to put her in don't use because she's not that bad. That buffed MP carries her, but she is going in D. The gap between her and the other welfare is just so fucking immense that it's like at this current point in time, why would you ever use Brave Liz if you have Iori? And I know NA does not have Iori, but you also don't have this MP. You don't have this MP buff either. So you can't. So that's not an argument. She doesn't get this until next year. Or NA. Next, Jean d'Arc, Alter Santa Lily. Jolter Santa Lily. Somehow she is closer to OG John than Jolter. Mostly because this is the little girl before she goes through Teenage Rebellion. Base attack, 9.2. Not bad. HP, again, not bad for a 4 star. MP charge, 0.72%. And Lancer Star Gen. These quick cards aren't that good, but it, it's cleaned up just a little bit by her being a Lancer. MP gain for this arts card is healthy, but only if she crits on it. E even though, even still though, 7.2 with three hits is fairly decent. Uh, two hit, one hit buster, five hit extra attack. Like it's surprising how many of these welfares have this five hit extra attack in that came from year one or two. When, like, none of the, like, one stars had anything close to it. And they all feel bad because of it. This is the same skill as Salter. This is different. She has an actual battery with debuff resistance. So she is able to do farming. Now, Santa Alter is also able to do farming. But thing is, she has just as bad damage. And this is the Jolter skill, but unlike so, uh, Santa Alter, this is a higher damage buff. This is a higher mana burst number than normal. So I can't say that she's not bringing anything different to the table. She still does a lot of damage to herself. Ain't gonna cap. Mag res mad magic resist a plus 21%. Anti-Avenger again. Oh, right. Oh. Because these units came out at a time before Moon Cancer was a thing. Right. The only counter to an Avenger was Berserker. And I know Appends came out after all this. But I'm just trying to see the reasoning for why they gave it Avenger. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But... At the same time, anti-Avenger, uh, there aren't that many boot cancers. You are more likely to have a welfare from some, one of these older welfares than you are a moon cancer that isn't BB. And BB, unless you had the rare prisms, you didn't have you couldn't get our MP5. At least with these other welfares, if you had them, they were probably MP5. Damage to all enemies, reduce debuff resistance, up to party attack, healing received. He is the opening for an MP chain. She's not really supposed to be doing that much damage. She's really kind of supposed to open up and let anyone that follows after her do a whole lot of damage. Again... Old Welfare, never got into buff, not even in Evocation. He's going in D tier 2. This one, 
Mm. Yeah, this one is like these two have already gotten multiple buffs and they're still in D tier. This Lily too. This servant has never gotten a buff. They did get a rerun. So their potential to go higher with evocation, which for all I know, the next evocation could be like next fucking week. That that's how like how soon they could the server can get a buff. It could be next week. Because uh Samurai Remnant collab still has another week to it. Any good buff is going to bump her up to C or B. I can promise that. MP buff, and I will bump her up to at least C. If it's a really good MP buff, maybe even B. Uh, yeah, she can't really do anything besides, like, open up for an MP chain and, like, have one good buster crit turn, and that's about it. I can't rank her any higher. Next up. Cha Cha. The servant also got buffed with evocation, and it was one of the more recent ones. Base attack is super low for a uh, berserker, like a four star berserker. This is way too low. Like she should be hitting like way closer to about ten k. She's a thousand below. Again, attack isn't everything, but for a berserker, attack kinda is a big part of it. They're supposed to do damage, and one of the key things that starts their scaling is lower than it should be. Star White Sargent, normal Zerker numbers, MP charge, healthy at 1.0, with actual hits on her arts, arts and quick card. A lot of older Berserkers have high gain, but like just shit hit counts. This, it's not great, but it is something. First skill, this needed the buff. 20 gauge per turn, 50% gauge when she takes hits, and 30% buster up for three turns. This modernized the shit out of this skill. The 10 just isn't enough for buster servants. It just isn't. Uh, Penthesilia uh, had a similar skill. And she was getting 20 per turn. And she had that from the get-go. This, this kind of didn't need to change a long time ago. This, as long as you can keep her, her alive, is basically another battery. Uh, I, again, would not say farming is what she's going to do good at. But, I mean, it's there for challenge quests. And Harbor Kit would want her to be in a challenge quest more than anything. Innocent monster, 10 stars per turn, star weight for everyone but herself for 50% for three turns. Again, this is like this isn't even gonna do anything for her. Her star weight is so low that like 50% down for everyone else, it's not it's not gonna change that much. It really isn't. Third skill. Inflex defense down, and it gets higher and higher every turn um yeah so you can get 50% after 5 turns this is only going to show up in a challenge quest Ne almost never in farming so yeah she's she is a aoe buster berserker that is in challenge quest that has zero survivability whatsoever like she this unit needs a guts she at the very least needs a guts or an invul something to stop her from dying because she cannot take this hit unless you have merlin out on the field she's just gonna straight up die 
ruler resistance, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, her MP, her survivability is this. They don't crit her as much. This is not enough. She needs a guts. She's a lot better than what she was before, but she definitely needs a guts. She has, but because she's a berserker, she has more usability than all four of these units. So that's why she goes in C. It, like with everything she she just got in her kit, it is much more likely for you to get to Cha Cha's MP than you are these two. If you're not, if if like Cha Cha is like gonna die anyway, is right now because she has no survivability. Like you don't need an esports version. You just throw on the field and she's she'll just die anyway. So just for the defense down, that's just gonna keep scaling up. Like, she does not need to be on the field for that. Like, she can technically just do her job. Like, it, it's a weak utility. Honestly, no. For that reason, I want to put you in an extremely niche. Because you're pretty much only putting on the field for... No, actually, see. Because the, bu the buster up does have use. She can actually get to her MP as long as you just like let her survive like one turn she might be able to get actually get to her MP with yeah without that buff and you're only using her for the defense down she would go here but with the buff she can kind of go here next up the most Kohai of all Kohai the ultimate end game boss Kohai uh BB. And BB does not stand for big boobs. Black boss. Black blossom. Mm. I do like this classroom VA better. Yeah. I like this classroom artwork better. <laughs> and then there's Rios. <laughs> All right, base attack, super goddamn low. Like, oh, like caster, caster level low. Like, not a good look. And moon cancers have a neutral modifier. Yeah, like, there's a reason the summer one came out as quickly as she did. Because this one is not... Again, attack isn't everything, but, like, this... This is really low, like 1,000 plus what it should be. HP is five-star level, so they made it to compensate. Uh, this is because BB is supposed to, was supposed to originally be like a support, but now they buffed her and she functions like a DPS. 0.61%, decent with the hit counts. And you are gen you are clicking these quick cards to gen stars. Like she is a moon cancer. She has a decent star gen. Not pretender, not uh assassin number, but still decent hit count. Uh star gen. So BB is infamous for enabling units that stun themselves to loop if their numbers are good enough. Because she cleanses them and then she makes them debuff immune. The thing about this is, with command codes, you can kind of do the same thing. And if it's a chance to stun, even more reason that you kind of don't need BB anymore for this. But you might not have the command codes that you actually need for it. Thus, she still sees use for that. But she has gotten way more utility than just that, and she can just slap this on herself. It is on a four turn cooldown. So for a challenge quest, this is awesome. It is a full cleanse. It's not even just one debuff. It is a full cleanse. A lot of people use her as looping support, but this is definitely more challenge quest oriented. Second skill, again, 
more challenge quest oriented, anti ruler shit. Oh, wait, sorry, not anti ruler. Uh, anti boss enemy shit. Chance to stun and removes evasion or invincibility. You know, the things that stop you from doing damage, as long as they're not unremovable, she can take them off. And third skill is where you really can pop off as a DPS and arts and multi core unit, especially if there's an Avenger somewhere. 50% crit damage, 800% star weight. That is going to pretty much make sure she's getting a lot of the stars, if not all of them. With her buff, she got a 30% arts buff. So now, like, she did not have any damage anywhere in her kit that would affect her MP. Now she has an arts buff that she didn't have before. And if you attack with the extra attack, you get a 10% battery for the party, not even just herself, for the entire party. Awesome for multi core. Like, if you're fighting an Avenger boss and you don't kill with the MP, Following up with a mighty chain might like lower the requirements needed for everyone else in your party to hit their MPs. Magic Resist B, 17.5%. Item Construction A for this stun to land. That's what it's for. It's for the stun. And Arts Buff to add on to what she already had, what she just got. Anti-Alter Ego, again, this makes sense, especially because this came out in a time long, long, long before the Pretender class. Like, three, four years before Pretenders were even a thing. So her getting this makes sense. Alter Egos were kind of uncontested, except by Berserkers for the longest time. But also, again, a Pen Skills came out after the fact, this is just more uh, post, post this going on, hap, uh, post, post game state adjustment where you don't, you, there still aren't that many pretenders in the game. So you'd still want something like this. And here is where her true multi core potential shines AoE 20% to the party. From MPing, single target. If there is an Avenger boss in a wave, you do this. And your other arts units, their requirements to loop go down dramatically. She also reduces debuff resistance, uh, scales with overcharge, so that any kind of other debuffs... Is, this is more a challenge quest thing. It's so other debuffs have an easier chance to land. Even these debuff resistance down have a better chance to land. So you can stack it up a lot easier. This buff was so fucking solid. Like, this was a buff you didn't think she, like, they would need, but you can't... It's so good for her kit. She was already, like, if she was able to spam her MP, she was already charging the rest of the party. Now it wants you to face card and actually take advantage of her having crit in her kit. This was, and it doesn't even need to be a mighty chain. It just needs to be a brave chain in general. So. At the very, wait, PB, where are you? How am I messing this up this badly? Where the fuck is BB? See chat, Th this is why I'm using the list like the way I am, so I know if I miss something. Okay, extra one. BB. Cut. Third. All right, BB, you're going to A tier. 
because you do your job and you do it so goddamn well. You don't have, like. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have complaints at this point. She does her job. She does does it really well. She's a good Kohai. I am not putting Bunyan on this list because Bunyan is a low star and I see far more utility from them as D as a debuffer. And a lot of the low stars are debuffers. So Bunyan not on this list. Next one though. Next one. All right. Summer Ishtar. Full disclosure, I have very, very, very limited experience using this servant. Hang on, I need to put my slippers on. Oh, right here. I have very little experience using this unit. Looks very Ren-like, but mm -mm. he hasn't been in a vacation yet. Hopefully soon. Base attack, good starting point, low HP, but doesn't matter that much. Star weight, star gen, good. MP charge, 0.68%. Uh, her quick cards suck. Her, her quick cards actually fucking suck. Why is her buster card that much better than her quick cards? Oh, boy. So, multi-core buff. Quick, ar quick up, buster up, MP gen. Good. At least at least that's okay. If she's not supposed to be main DBS and she's multi-core, that's honestly fine with me. Evasion, one attack, one turn. This is what Summer Musashi has on a four-turn cooldown. This skill needs to get buffed because other versions of this skill have already been buffed. Uh, Summer uh, Tamamo Lance. Yeah, Tomo Lancer, Kiara. They have had this skill buffed and it does not stun themselves. This is immediately this is immediate red flag for me. Although in multi-core, it doesn't matter that much. It's just like this MP gen, not gonna matter. The crit damage, sure. It's good for a crit turn. If she's AoE, this is gonna hurt. If she's single target, it's not gonna hurt as much. But it's this still needs a buff at this point. Yeah, crit damage, star gen, MP gen, debuff resist, healing rate. Some of these should be th uh, three turns. Riding EX, 12% quick performance, independent action A, 10% uh, crit damage, goddess essence, 22.5%. Uh, Anti ruler is a useless append for a seven knight class. Uh, yeah, seven knight class. So, she is AoE. You know, I, I do see how you can use this, but it's only if turn one is all casters, has one enemy that's super high health, and you just don't kill, and then you fall out with cards. But you kind of need multi-core at this point, then. It has to be multi-core, otherwise you're screwed. She has, she has potential, but like, this kind of kills it for me. No buffs, no buffs either. Where are you? Do not fucking tell. No, you're right here. She's nowhere near down here. Absolutely not. She's nowhere close to being here. C or B. I want to put, say C because she hasn't gotten a buff yet. At C, she can go up higher. She has potential to go up higher, but right now she just... Her MP doesn't have a normal effect. She still can stun herself. This is great. I don't have complaints about this. And this is good too. 
She has a lot of crit damage in her own kit. I'm not going to deny that. But where you would actually need this servant is far and few between and her refund. Her refund has to be not good. And, and if anything, this skill does need to be buffed and bring all these numbers to 30. I Or that's what I'd wish they do. She also has like quick and buster up when she only has one buster card. So that's year two. Um, I mean, at least she can do a quick chain, but yeah. She can go a lot better. All right. We got the Mecha Ellie's. I'm going to go with this one because this is the first Mecha Ellie I chose. If you did not have single target alter egos, these carry you. For a new account, these, uh, hang on, I have to go to the bathroom. I, I cannot. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, yeah, hour and 30 minutes. And we're up to year three. Uh, I need more water.
Uh, all right. So if you are a new player, this welfare is going to carry you for until you get specific replacements. Like you get a single target, uh, assassin, uh, rider, and cast. Until, until then, you're either relying on a berserker or you're relying on one of the mecha Ellie's. They're like high base attack, good MP gain, alter ego, so they have like decent star weight and gen. It counts. Extra attack is the weakest part of upstairs in their kit. Like phenomenal base stats for a welfare servant, especially one that came out with the third. Um, what is it? Ellie, the third Ellie uh, Halloween event. First skill, 10 stars per turn and 30% defense on a five turn cooldown. W literally one bitch proc or any cooldown reduction from uh, Atlas. And this has 100% uptime. Awesome for a new player because you can get Atlas. You don't need, like, you can get bitch off your support list and you can do Atlas. And then you have this. Second skill, 20% battery damage and then 25 star bomb. Again, on a five turn cooldown, one Vich and, uh, or one Vich bat, uh, battery or Atlas Misty Code, and you can reset the cooldown and get this, uh, get this, uh, back, uh, sorry, brain farting, get this back relatively quickly. Third skill. This is the unfortunate part, part. Chance to remove your own defensive buffs. It sucks. But you're trading all your survivability that you currently have. And remember, it's only defensive buffs. So if you do not have anything, this is not an issue. Or if you get these buffs after you uh, pop this skill, they can't go away. So you pop this skill and then you pop cast stories MP. You still have your solemn defense. And then you got 60% MP damage and 60% crit damage. These are such high fucking damage steroids. Either one of them would be worth it in multi-core, which these days, if she's not fighting a boss, if you're using her, probably multi-core. She's got the battery. And she can out she can get the damage herself. She stat she Scales very, very well with Vich. Although you would like an attack buff somehow thrown in. Like, and then obviously Oberon doubles this from 60 to 120. Uh, if you're able, if you are willing to use a black rail on her, on uh, Mecha Ellie, you are in for some like disgusting levels of MP damage that only gets bigger uh, with other types of buffs that you can get attack attack and buff buster being the main thing uh this would not be in a standard setup it would be involving units dying to refresh buffs though debuff resistance 17.5 percent and item construction b eight percent this is a useless a pen you're not gonna bring an alter ego to fight a saber. However, I also have to bring up that these two are basically the same unit. The only difference they made, they made this unit have a difference between what it is they do. Only difference is the third of pen. And this one is Lancer, so it's just as bad. It literally does not matter which one you choose they both do the same shit. They're the same units, but different existences. NP, damage to one enemy, removes their defensive buffs. And reduces their de defense. You could use her in multi-core, but as this MP would show, you would more likely be using her in a challenge class which is where I think she would shine the most. Defense down doesn't work in farming. 
And in a challenge quest, they'd actually have defensive buffs. This is going to be another solid A tier unit. 100%. I have such fond memories of using this unit and using her to clear through. Oh my God. Don't tell me I forgot Mecha Ellie too. Train of, oh, good, good. Train of thought completely der derailed because this is an expression, expression, not her actual artwork. I don't know why I did this for these three. That is a, that's a fucking problem. But too late to fix. Yeah, she's super solid. Uh, any buffs can easily push her into A plus or EX. But... She she's just lacking a little bit. She just she just needs a buffer too. Probably one buff. Yeah, one buff. All right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, twenty-eight more. Wow. Right, this is forty. This is like forty two, forty four. So third of the way done. Oh god. Altera the Santa. This just got competition. Although she is more catered to challenge quests and yeah, challenge quests and or raids that are not one turn. Let's talk about Altera. Base sack, it's high. HP, it's okay. Star weight or star weight and star gen are archer numbers. MP charge 0.59. Very healthy at these hit counts. Five head, four head extra attack, though, is a shame. First skill, targeted battery and star gen. Already seeing multi core. She can choose who she's putting the battery on, and she makes them let them make more crit stars. This is multi core. Targeted. MP damage and crit damage of 30%. Last one turn, five turn cooldown. Actually, no, multi, not multi core, but like plug suit. You'd plug suit this in, this unit in to do more damage. Like you're bond point farming and you don't want to use uh, Oberon with like an art servant. That's why you'd use Altera. Third skill. Ignores invincibility for three turns. Star weight for three turns at 600%. Defense, 30%. And she will stun herself after three turns. Magic resist C, 15%. Riding EX, 12%. Quick up. Decline of civilization instead of independent action, 10% crit damage. Divinity for tickle. Anti foreigner append. Makes sense because the original version of Altera from Extella like is considered a foreigner. That depends on what world line. And talking about the moon, which we're not talking about the moon. MP. 10 hit single target to one enemy and gain crit stars. I truly think multicore is going to be her best use case. But, uh, like, you could just use her as a plug support. You need the extra battery, and you could use the extra damage. It's not the worst thing. It's something you can do. Should you do it? That's definitely up to you. And 20 star bomb min scales up to 40 is the OC. Like, there is nothing inherently wrong with this unit. There isn't. It's just getting MP5 costs rare prisms. So there is going to be the newer you are, the weaker your Altera is. For this tier list, we are talking about MP5. But yeah. I do want to say if you're using her in multi core, 
Nobu kind of does it better by doing three turn duration. But she has two different skills for this. And her MP itself could be considered multi core if. Mm, it's one of these two. But yeah, because just like she hasn't gotten buffs either. Like a lot of these welfares, they can go up or down, or not not down. They'd go up if they got a buff. Any of these units that have never gotten a buff, I can't put them too high because if they do get a buff, I can't have them shooting up too much. It's they'll just stay in the same place. Next, we are talking about. This guy is one of the OG art sloopers uh, against one of the hardest class to actually loop against, Assassins. If you bring him to fight Assassins, he loops really, really good. If you fight, send him to fight other classes. As long as he's doing enough damage, he's going to loop just as well. But definitely not bring him like not fighting assassins is gonna be a pain point for him. If you bring if he's fighting too many berserkers, that's also gonna be an issue. Luckily, with a pens being a thing and you being able to have them like actually, um, he gets significantly better because you can save batteries from the Castorias returns that you need it. Like you just loop a little bit under, or like you're able to pop Castoria MPs on turn one. Thus, he has more attack buffs going into later waves. This is definitely his biggest pain point, though. His extremely low base attack for a looper. It makes getting overkill significantly harder for him. And he like if his MP did not do defense down first, he would be a lot worse at looping because he just wouldn't be getting the overkill. MP charge 0.78. It is very good that it's as high as it is. They screwed it. Like he has really bad hit counts. Like they're not they're not modern. Like he would, I think he could use like a hit count adjustment. But yeah, like this, him as a crit servant isn't gonna work because of his attack. It's just not. First skill, 30% gain, max HP. This is what helps him loop the way he does. I This is only 30%. I don't see why this can't be a three turn. Buff this skill and make it three turn. Then his damage is, and refund is way more consistent. 100% power mod against dragons tied to a 30% battery. This is, yeah. is going to depend on use case. And depending on if there's a dragon in the node. You, you'd swap popping this with one of the Castoria 30%. Which, to be fair, you'd want the Castoria 30% because it, it, it actually does give you damage that will help with looping. But it, I, it always depends on the situation. Like, if you're swapping it, people in and out, you're going to want to save the Castorias for the people that will be staying on the field. Independent Action EX, 12%. Homunculus C plus and arts up 6.5%. Debuff resist 6.5%. Anti saber. There are a lot of saber servants that have the dragon trait. That, that is why this is a good append because sabers with dragon is, they are infamous. These are infamous servants. And then other servants that have dragons that aren't writers, he, he at least does neutral numbers. The, like, this is a surprisingly effective niche for him to have, and it is a fairly good power mod. But it's only against dragons and only one turn. But you just, again, you'd save this for turn three of a node if one of those servants are there. Three hit AoE arts, damage to all enemies, reduces their defense first, starts 20, 
increases up to 40. Again, if this didn't activate first, his looping numbers would not be nearly as good as they are. Uh, here, Sieg, 24, and if he's fighting Dragon, he shoots up to 50. It, at niche, he does more damage than any other AoE in the game. Like, not even a contest. Ask is the only exception, and that is with all her stars aligning at MP5. MP2, which is way more reasonable, is when you her damage gets better. Uh, but again, that is only against dragons. And if you are comparing Sieg to like MP1, uh, shit, where? Yeah, like MP1 casters, he's doing just as much damage as the five stars. So that is why Sieg has the reputation he does. Um, here as a farmer, we'll go again, we'll touch on this later, but yeah, he's here as a farmer. Rioma, this man is multicore, straight up. There are no exceptions. He is a multi-core unit. He, he was so goddamn good in the most recent lotto on JP. Him and Nemo were like basically as long as you had either Oberon or Castoria, you did not need both. You would be farming uh, 6CE for that lottery on the hardest difficulty with this unit because he worked so well with Nemo. Base attack, it's low is what it is. Could it should be better, but it's not. Star weight sergeant rider numbers MP uh charge 0.56 with he's the rider he's supposed to be critting on these orcs cards and he can make stars for himself too. So this gets the pass. His hit counts are phenomenal. His arts card is his lowest. Buster and quick above average. Although the buster is mostly for star gen. And quick. It's not going to be that good. This skill needs a buff. Because it's not even 20. And it doesn't do anything else. This skill needs a buff. AoE 10%. Party buff resistance, 20%. This is for challenge quests where you'd need something like this. AOE arts buff, 20%, and drops 15 stars. Again, on a five-turn cooldown. If you are using him with Tombo, you have stupidly good uptime on all of your skills. Magic resist C, debuff resistance, 15%, riding a plus, 11% quick, so the quick card is better than it looks. Divinity for extra tickle. Anti-Archer. There's nothing inherently wrong with this. I know this is for Takasugi. If I'm not mistaken, this he has anti-Archer for Takasugi, even though Takasugi wasn't even out uh, when they added this append. But... Uh, It would have been well into development for the event, and I think they already had Takasugi like planned as an archer. I could be wrong about that, but that's my opinion that they were already pl planning to bring Takasugi. Because I've seen like what the development time is, and it's definitely like this. It this would have came around the time they would have been developing Takasugi.
All right, MP got buffed recently, so upgraded damage reduces their gauge, guaranteed from the chance that it was on the overcharge. This was horrendous. This MP needed it because this was a, an MP with no normal effect and possibly no overcharge either. Now he also dropped stars, cleaned up the kit, now started cleaning up the skills. Prisma first. No conceivable way I can put him anywhere close to the EX or even uh, A+. Plus. He's going... Oh, that's Magoichi. I want to put him in B because his skills still need work. His skills don't do much. And yeah, like he is more carried by uh, his synergy with Nemo and just multi-core in general. Not really him by himself. Like if he's single core, he gets a lot weaker. And granted, I am putting him up here for sing uh, multi-core. He's good at it, but the buff value isn't there he he has the buffs for it he just doesn't have the damage that comes with those buffs normally and it affects him uh functioning him and the person he's supposed to be fighting with oh boy okay so this one is going to be hella biased because this is the first welfare i ever got in fgo Summer 3 rerun is what I started FGO with on NA. I was already a fan of Jolter. Even, like, coming in from outside FGO, I knew who Jolter was. I just... It was so early at my game history that I didn't know Jolter was limited and not permanent. Yeah. That's how new I was really to gotchas at the time. Even though I played Genshin, Genshin was like, I, I don't know. It was just different, man. I, I wasn't that smart of a gotcha player. Base attack above 10K. Awesome, awesome, awesome. HP low, and it gets even lower when you see your kit. She is very squishy. She will die very easily. Berserker numbers, MP charge 0.52 with fantastic hit counts on these cards. Any kind of like little buffs that she can get for them is going to make a good difference. First skill, regeneration buff. Every turn she gets a dodge for one attack for three turns and a 30% MP gen up for three turns as well on a six turn cooldown. Second skill, 20% attack and a chance to add burn. So she can put the burn on herself for Honey Lake. And as long as you are able to get um, a burn off on her third turn, uh, she has 100% uptime on burn. So you don't need to run it on command codes and you can run damage or healing on the command codes. Five turn as well. Third skill, 20% buster buff. Yikes. This should, and a 20% battery. Okay, no, 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 no. This skill needs a buff badly because it's literally Jolter's third skill, but way worse because it has zero survivability. The su survivability is that she gets her MP from this and possibly kills the enemy before she takes damage. No. Yes, she has some survival, yeah, survivability here, but all it takes is one per enemy to hit you before an MP and you're screwed. She doesn't have any other kind of survivability besides this. Big, 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 big issue on this. Because she has a battery, because of mana loading, she has multi-core usage. But it's going to have to stay multi-core. You cannot bring her to like a challenge quest. She is going to get eviscerated. Manus Enhancement EX or 12% Buster up. 
She's the Berserker. And this is for uh, her own Nissan, fucking sociopathic Janu, who if you who threatens people with a fucking shark if they don't listen to her big sister brainwashing. And then the MP also doesn't have a normal effect, but it does have a pretty chunky burn at 3K. She doesn't have spread of fire. Um, if she did, like this is significant amp significant base value to be amped up. Uh yeah, once again, I have to put her in B tier. Just like um Ryoma, because the skills are holding her back too much. All like and also her MP at this point too. Skills and MP holding her back. One sec, I need more water. All right, we're almost up to halfway point. Oh, damn it. Uh, 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 shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. There. I'm not hesitating because you guys will see porn. I don't look at porn on my computers. That's what that's what the phone and tablet are for. No sleep the tablet. I'm not like Nux or Matt Pat who have never looked at porn before. Yeah, I'm sure Nux Taku has never looked at hentai, 100%. All right. Shuten Doji Caster. Her damage isn't terrible. The problem is her getting back to it. She needs more star weight and more reliance on Earth's crits to really be refunding. Base attack is good. MP charge is okay considering the hit counts and how many cards she has. Honestly, they could have even dropped this lower. Uh, because like Zenobia has two hit arts cards at the same, pretty much the same uh value. Or two arts cards, not two hit. First skill, MP seal, put attack chance down 50% for three turns. This is a hard, this is a hard neuter to any unit's critting. And because she is a caster, she's putting this on assassins who have the highest uh, crit chance, I believe. Highest base crit chance. So she is literally stopping the enemies from being able to crit her. That is decent survivability. And also their gauge doesn't go up. But this is the challenge quest utility. Second skill, needs buff, and all these need to go to three turns. This is, this affects a refund. This affects her damage too much. This, these need to get buffed. Arguably more than the MP, but they need to buff both of them. It's an, it becomes an order of what needs to be buffed first and how, how soon will the next one, next buff come. Third skill. This is what keeps our damage from not being shit. 20% attack for the party and 50% uh, power mod against demonic enemies. Demonic is very common and especially shows up against... It's mostly assassin servants that have demonic. So she gets power mod against servants she already was going to be effective against. Challenge quest unit. Or... Yeah, challenge quest. Because multi-core is going to be way too much of an issue to trying to get her up. You're not going to be able to double stack this. Unless you're shotgunning, where you have double two Viches and Atlas, and you're double popping this. Can't use Oberon in that situation. Better have fucking Black Rail on, otherwise your damage is going down the crapper. Because that is only one turn buffs. You'll have to... 
and you gotta hope you don't have a buster card you gotta hope that you didn't have a buster card when you did that otherwise you will not be able to even refund back or you just killed the enemy it's either if you don't kill the enemy you're screwed uh, penned anti-berserker very very good for her especially considering that there are a couple demonic uh servants that are berserkers oh what's up gabby yeah so this is good a pen for her that i don't think she was gonna get a better one uh hold up yeah berserkers are it would have been either Lancer or Berserker, and Berserker works for more than just Demonic. You'd bring her for more than just Demonic. 13 hits, single target, ignores evasion, damage to one enemy, poison. The MP, I think, is... Uh, let's see damage. It's less of an issue than I would think. Yeah. MP buff does not need to happen. It needs to be her second skill. That is like, cause that will keep her damage consistent, which is very much lacking. Uh, in comparison to her five star and four stars, like she does, she doesn't need that type of damage upgrade. Doesn't need an MP buff. She needs consistency. Um, Yeah, once again, another unit going to B tier. All right. Next, pets. Again, if you want to use this servant for farming, you're going to need Summer Chloe. Like, there is no exception to it. Uh, yeah. So, Ruler, she gets positive modifier. Uh, good base attack. MP charge, 0.71. Decent gains for the hits. Ruler, so Sargent is not terrible. These quick cards are going to perform well. Buster cards will actually gen stars too, based on her own kit. she drunk she drank too much eggnog uh but yeah hit counts good moving on first skill 20 percent attack and stars return this isn't broken like kimiko but this is still decent considering she's supposed to be a crit servant second skill target star weight for one turn and star gen up 30 percent for three turns Buster up 30%, star weight of Buster cards 600% for one turn on a five turn. She's supposed to be a crit servant. Magic resist A plus 21%, God's Essence A 25%. She has 46% debuff resistance. Is If this isn't what you'd want to bring to a challenge quest, a unit against a unit, that debuffs the shit out of you. Yeah. You'd want to bring Samba Kent. Uh, trying to think best case scenario, but like this is like against an, a boss that literally just tries to debuff you. Kent is just not going to take it and do decent damage. Anti-ruler append because lol. But at the same time, this is a welfare extra class. If you do not, if you're not willing to risk a berserker against a ruler, this probably is going to be one of your better options for you not to be screwing yourself over. MP upgrades are star gen, 100% for one turn, activates first, and ramps up party's crit damage. Or three turns. Base 30 scales up to 50. This is 100% a crit servant. Uh, but they just like OG cats, 
need a little bit of work. Not even that much. Like, Samba Cats doesn't need that much help uh, to bring her in line with more modern... But, like, like, all her competition are AoEs, so it's hard. And, like, Bunny Toria is a crit servant, too. Like, just, like, She's an AoE with uh splat or she's a crit servant with splash damage MP. Uh this if you're not fighting multiple enemies, this part is gonna be underwhelming and she's not gonna gen as many stars. Uh yeah, like uptime on having stars ready is going to be the big issue for her. I think this skill this skill needs to get buffed more. If they want to double down on being crit servant. Um, like 30% crit damage, make this 100%. And this, honestly, this kind of can stay uh, one turn. But this value needs to go up. Hmm. He's fair. He's fair. It, like, she doesn't have four star competition. Like, the other AoE arts or AoE welfare for rulers is EO, who is a welfare. I know it might have been redundant how I said it. But she's, these units at least are doing something good, and their effective or their effective class would actually show up. Because Shisho kind of has a similar situation, but at the same time, she's better as a crit servant than Samba Cats. Like, Samba Cats is carried by being a ruler. She'll just take less damage. Well, Shisho, like, can output the more, more damage, and her effective class is pretty common. She's, she's mostly fighting writers. And, like, her quick cards will get a boost in gain because they're writers. Halfway point, and it's gray. Um, one sec. Okay, so actually, gray is the first unit I'm putting into EX because there is no competition for AoE Buster Rider or AoE Buster Welfares that do this job. Farming. She has no competition from other Buster servants. Unironically, her main competition is Welfare using Black Rail and Gray, even at Super Scope, is doing comparable damage to an AoE Arts Welfare using Black Rail, if I'm not mistaken on that. Yes. Super Scope Gray out damages, almost out damages Black Grail Valks with Oberon. And let me repeat that. Super scope. You can use other CEs that give above between 60 and 100%. Because of her skills, as long as that third, you're going to have to have that skill uh, three maxed. No, you're not even going to have to need it maxed out. You just don't pop it. We'll get into it in a second. But as long as you have. Uh, Mana loading append, preferably ma maxed out, you can get away with other CEs. Thus, she is one of the easiest units to have to be three turning because, because of how high her damage is, because she's MP5. 
and her really nice MP upgrade that she got. Base attack is good. 7.1% uh, MP charge. Triple quick. I don't think it's that much of a detriment to her, but ruler, she'd be used with Ruler Scotty no matter what. Um, she'd like to be used with Scotty, but Ruler Scotty to give her Buster up uh, in Challenge Quest. Normally, you'd be using Double Bitch for farming. Double Bitch Oberon. But in a Challenge Quest, you can just mix and match this stuff. First skill, 30% attack up and 100% power mod against undead. In Challenge Quest, you can use Summer Wu to turn all the enemies undead, thus enabling this power mod. Uh, it's not the most ridiculous thing to do, and Summer Wu doesn't even need to be esports. She just needs to pop the MP, uh, and then she still has to die, though. Um, yeah. Super solid skill that can be double stacked. 40% up for a quick and buster in farming. You have like, you can pop this turn one and three, but if you pop this turn two, you cannot pop it turn three. Cannot be double stacked. And these are not three turn buffs. Third skill, 20% battery static, debuff res, three turns. You, if you are not starting with K-Scope, like an MOB K-Scope where you don't have to use this battery, you need this maxed out so you can use it in farming. If you have to pop this on turn one, you need this skill maxed out. If you don't, if you already have like a super scope, uh, you don't need mana loading. It would help. It would let you get more damage, but you don't need it. You don't have to use your lures for it just to make this do more damage. Passive skills, 11% crit damage up. Magic resist C, debuff resistance, and 10% MP gain intrinsic. Anti-Berserker, really, really, really nice for a farming servant that is like Best case scenario, besides her getting anti-rider, which they were never going to do. MP buff. Ignores invincibility. Damage to all enemies. 10% battery on the back end like all uh, Artorias. And still keeps the quick res and bus res down. This severely helps with the refund. And this gives you more damage on follow-up MPs if you're able to get back. She can be used in farming and or challenge quests. Like, just challenge quests you have a little more restrictions for. You have less restrictions on what CEs you have to use, but more restrictions on how you are timing stuff. I also have to mention, because of Summer Wu, like, her damage, just face card, is phenomenal. She double stacks an attack buff with a power mod at 100%. For, like, one unit's... Granted, it's a limited. For one unit's MP to be able to, like, up her damage that much, it's... She just has too much potential. And normally, I wouldn't bring up a, a gotcha servant like that, but because it's on Summer Scotty's, a lot of people have at least one copy that have Summer Scotty. You only need one copy of Summer Blue to like enable her for not just Gray, but She Show too. And Summer and regular Ibuki. Okay. So I need to pause the recording. Need to take a little break because uh break. We'll come back here later. Short, like, 15-minute break. But let's get this done. We have 21 servants still to do. 
All right, next up on the list, Kagetora. I am honestly surprised that they did not get a buff with uh, the release of the five-star version. I really thought they would have done it, especially because they came out in Invocation 2. Right? Wait, is... Oh, wait, they're not. Are they? No, I don't think they're in uh, Evocation. All right. Uh, yeah, so when they become part of Evocation, they will probably get a buff. If you've seen the memes with her, like her facial expressions are fucking top tier, like pure yandere face. Like this is what I would do with my grails if I had any type of shit. Uh, face attack, 9.6K, good. MP charge, 4.5%. Uh, this is okay, considering these are four, but she also needs stuff in her kit that lasts longer than a turn to make this actually okay. First skill, 30% arts up, 500% star weight. I don't know, this shouldn't be uh, one turn. It should be three turns by this point. One turn of evasion, 30% MP gen on a five turn cooldown. Again, this should be three turns. Third skill, 20% attack, 20% crit damage for the party, 20% star gen for the party. With this current kit, she is relegated to multi-core and not actual uh, challenge quest DPS. It does also doesn't help that she's arts for this reason. She's MP spam, and that's it. She also does not have a battery, which makes it even harder for her to be multi-core. She still needs, she needs AOE buffers. So that's the benefit of her being art, that she gets to run with Castoria, which is, and most buffs, a lot of the buff, or, ugh, can English. A lot of the buffers for arts are AOE in some of their stuff. So that's, if she was any other card type, she would not be doing too well. Ebuff res, 15%. Riding C, 6%. Divinity for Tickle. Bonsi, Riders. I mean, they have decent gain, but like... There's no way it's Takeda. There's no way she has this for Takeda, so... Um, I'm trying to think... Why? And I, I, I'm just not seeing it. Uh, specifically because when she came out, there were no riders in the event. The only rider for Gouda is Ryoma, and I think they lived in different time periods. Could, could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure different time period. MP. Eight hit single target, removes offensive buffs, reduces crit attack chance. This unit has really good hit counts, but nothing lasts long enough to really do some damage. I know this servant has a lot of uh, people that are a fan of it, but too, like for me, too heavily reliant on getting Castoria buffs. Like, really heavily reliant. Like, she can be in the party, doesn't need all the game from Castoria, but she still needs Castoria to be giving her stuff. Like, the important stuff for an art servant are one turn. And that, if you look at me in my opinion of Lee Shuen, like, that is not enough. For raids, this is fine. As long as you do enough damage. If you don't do enough damage, kind of screwed. But, yeah. If her only job is to be killing a raid boss, that's an archer or a berserker. I guess she can do it pretty well. But in multi-core, you're going to run into issues because she doesn't have a battery. Solid B tier. 
solid B tier. Hokusai Saber. Oof. This is the second welfare that I got in FGO. So, single target art saber. Uh, can do multi core and would all and single core as well. She would work for either. Uh, yeah, she'd work for either. It would not matter. She could do both roles fairly easily. Star weight, star gen, normal saber numbers. Again, 9.3k attack. MP charge 0.46. Four hit arc cards. Makes sense. Five fit extra. And the other card counts are above average. Mighty chains will look really good with her. They will do damage. And actually gen stars, even though she's a saber. And a decent amount. First skill, 20% battery and 20 stars. Again, she can function in both single core and multi core. This would work for both. This depends on when you need to crit. Second skill, star weight, three turns, 500%. It's low, but it's kind of all she needs for the most part. One time, three turn guts with 2k HP. This is on a seven turn. This uptime isn't the best. Uh, and honestly, yeah, I would say if they were going to give her a skill buff, it would be this and try to get the cooldown a little bit lower while also like giving her crit damage. Crit damage. Because this isn't enough. But 30% arts buff for three turns. On attack buff, when she attacks, does not need to be arts guard. This works off extra attack too. She has the potential of ramping up to 80% uh, crit damage in one single turn. There is no restrictions on this. If you are, if she's solo or if you're, if a lot of people are dying and she is just MP card, card, MP card, card, MP card, card with extra attack, she's going to have so much crit damage at the end of it. This is, this would only work with BB card lock though, or you're cycling through uh, people buffing her. Uh, and they just keep dying. Magic resist C. E buff resistance 15%. Divinity E for tickle. Anti foreigner. This makes so much sense. It's the beat the shit out of her father. For drawing hentai of her. And then selling it in Chaldea. Like. You know. That that probably happened in the universe of um Grand uh Grand Carnival. You know that shit probably happened in Grand Carnival. <sighs> Hell no actually no, not even Grand Carnival. They had a Comic Con. That shit probably was already drawn. It's probably out there in Caldea. Someone has some do some tentacle dojins involving like Hokusai's daughter, Oe. Damn. Thought that's righteous fury right there. Okay. MP would be need to get looked at though. Because it has no normal effect. The overcharge though. Has that good scaling base 30 up to 70 and Castoria setups any like Castoria MPs you pop in front of it is directly going to increase the MP damage. This one hunt like so this unit can function as an MP spammer or as a crit servant. So 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 likely for this unit I think to get EX. But right now you're at A plus because now you're in competition with Shiki. And between the two. Hmm. 
Mm. This is on signal target already, right? Yeah. Between the two, between Shiki and Hokusai, it actually would be hard to say who would be performing better. Because, like, Shiki... Shiki's MP isn't going to refund that much. While Hokusai has an 8 hit, getting boosted by Castoria. And, like, her arts cards are multi-hit. Yeah, like, Hokusai would be better as an art spammer. You wouldn't need extra batteries that much. You'd have an easier time getting away with Black Rail than you would with Shiki. Because Shiki has limited batteries and very limited refund. But we'll come to that decision later. Santa Nightingale. This is the first unit I am putting up in EX, but not as a farmer. Has nothing to do with... Oh, wait. Santa Martha. Shit. No, it, no, I stand by it. She's going into EX for challenge quest reasons. This is one of the best challenge quest supports in the entire game. And she is unconditional, which is why she gets put up here first before I, like, why I hesitated with Martha. You'd put them in the party for the same objective, but for very different purposes. Base attack is super high for a unit that's supposed to be a support. She can do DPS herself, but I think her best role is as a support. 100%. 11 point, uh, 11k HP. Star weight, star gen, archer numbers, MP charge 0.6. But she has double quick, double arts. She's like... She has the stuff in her kit to be able to be doing the DPS herself. She's just better as a support, though. She just is. She like All her buffs just work better as a support. First skill removes enemy's latest buff. This is all enemies. Not the best. Cleanse, latest debuff from the party. Party HP. If this was all enemy and all cleanse for people in the party... I would definitely be putting her in EX. Or, like, it wouldn't be a contest whether she was in EX or not. She would be in a EX. Because they have full buff strip for all enemies and a full party cleanse for your entire party is, like, there is no servant that does that. The full party cleanse is Castoria, and the full buff strip is Kiara. Like, you don't see both of them at the same time. It would be super nice if that was true, but it's not. Second skill, targeted guts one time, three turns. Buff removal resistance 100% for three turns. MP damage up 30% for three turns. This is only challenge quest utility. This has nothing, like this is the only thing for multi-core. For multi-core, yeah, know what? That, that's how they're, they're going to be distinguished. This is a challenge quest buffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, this skill, you see it so often in challenge quests where there is no possible way to avoid dying to some kind of mechanic. Like, uh, full power, like Kiara. Like, she's going to wipe your entire party or some shit. Uh, with her MP or whatever it is. I haven't done full power QR in a while where you have to wait for like seven turns or something. This buff removal resistance will save your ass in one of the story quests coming up in the future if you're on NA. If you're on JP, you know exactly which one I'm talking about where like this buff removal resistance almost becomes a requirement for how good it is. You slap this on Bazette, and she, like, no matter what, nothing is fucking stopping her. You slap this on Bazette, and it fixes a lot of the problems she has in her kit. 
Third skill, 20% attack buff to the party, 30% crit damage to the party. More value than Ishar's Charisma, but Ishar can double stack it sooner. I still think that 20, 20 and 20 for a five star is too little. I think I still think Ishar needs her Charisma buff. Madras SC, 15%. Independent action A plus 11% crit damage. Madness enhancement EX 12%. Just because she still has it. It, it. She's just one of those berserkers where like, she, like the madness contaminates other classes. Although this is like not a separate spirit origin. It's just, it's the original wearing a swimsuit. So yeah, uh, that's the more likely reason. Anti Avenger append. I, I I don't I don't remember Summer Four enough to remember why she'd have this. I just don't. MP AOE quick six hit damage to all enemies removes their offensive buffs. Also removes all their dots. Reduces defense, but this is really baby scaling. Her MP is not good. Th like this part. You literally can't use her in a dot team. It it sucks. And also, not only dots, but Honey Lake. This will neg Honey Lake if you actually use this. Or the Jock CE that gives a damage bonus. Yeah. So, she's in EX, not for her overall kit, but because as a challenge quest unit, that second skill, no, just all her skills in general, just make your life a lot easier. Sorry, I was hearing something from one of my computers. Next, Iris. What a fucking tragedy this is. And then we get the non-welfare version and the non-welfare uh, Ares fucking slaps the shit out of people. This unit is held back by the fact that they insta-kill first. It's not... It's a low chance, but it still happens and it annoys the shit out of you because you don't get any refund for a looper that needs all the enemies it can get to loop. Nine K attack, it's okay. MP charge point six three percent. Again, it's not terrible. She like she. This is important for her. Charge and twelve percent with double quick deck. It counts between arts and quick. Good. Five hit extra attack. First skill, 30% arts. Two hits, three turns of evasion. Good skill. Good. I think this is exactly what, like, this is what Summer Kama has, but just with a different name. One turn of evasion. One, one turn of star weight. No, this skill sucks. This skill sucks. Mm -mm. Even though it's on a low cooldown, not enough. Third skill, and it's what makes it's what makes using her in farming a nightmare because you don't want the insta kill to kill the trash mobs. You do want the crit damage, even if it's low, but you really want the power mod against servants. This is literally every servant in the game. All playable servants have the servant trait. Here's some other servants that have it. The different versions of Iris Feel from the Hollow Ataraxia, especially the Black Rail one. Uh, you, Olga Marie. The one from the uh, Bleach Earth version. Baby, Super Baby Karen. Uh, Sarazawa Kamo. Or uh, Zibalba. This is like basically just variations of servants. These enemies that show up in Trom, they do count as servants. They do. So archer versions of them, they would take more damage.
But that 100% insta-kill rate seals her fate. Magic resist spirit, 10% debuff resistance, and even more debuff resistance against undead enemies. Quick performance up 7%, good for the double quick. 8% crit damage up and extra divinity for tickle. Anti-Lancer. Don't know off the top of my head this one. NP, again, the effects, this effect is fun. Removes defensive buffs. No issues here. Besides that it happens after damage. This insta-kill chance fucks you up so hard. Just OC3, and it's almost guaranteed for some of these. Like, you... It's just, you can't use her in farming. You literally can't unless you have enough gauge. You cannot start her with a good damage CE because of this. I don't want to say don't use it all, though, because the crit damage and the power mod do work for her as a crit servant. So she's not unusable. She's not down here, but she's also not that good. She's held back too heavily by flaws in her kit. So she goes here. Summer Wu. I mean, Summer Yu, not Wu. Summer Yu. Guchan. I have done um, solos for Grail Fronts with this unit multiple times. Her kit works so well for a Grail Front. But there are definitely flaws. Base attack nice and high. HP, I kind of wish it was higher because it makes her soloing a lot easier. Star rate, star gen, good. MP charge. Oh, by the way, those solos were me killing everything, too. It was not like manipulating AI to go punch the shit out of uh, whoever is the enemy master. It is me killing every single enemy on the map. Just, just needed to throw, um, put that out there. Uh, all right. Hit counts. Not good. Two hits on the arts, even with a 1.1. Not the best. It's lucky that she's a quick servant. Otherwise, this would be a very bad refund. Four hit uh, extra attack again. Not the worst though, because she has such high base stats, like 1.1 and 12%. That's a lot higher than a lot of other units. So she will refund, but it would be better if it was five hits. Okay, so she is very conditional. She gets better MP gain on Waterside and Sunlight Battlefield. The sunlight part is a lot easier to manage. Water side, not so much, but it's more you have to be seeing water in the background uh, and in the background for the fight you're in. In grail fronts, it's not always entirely clear when the water side is active. Obviously, sunlight is obvious. It's light out. But water side, sometimes you think Places count as water side and they don't. So she can get up to 60% uh, MP gain from this skill and a one turn, five time guts on a six turn cooldown. This phenomenal skill for rail fronts, so like solos in general, because like you can use command codes to heal her up so this guts lasts longer. And the guts is a 5k heal. So even if you go down, you are, as long as you have healing command codes, you are going to get a good amount of HP back and go back to soloing. And you might be popping the guts on, like, the turn after. So all you have to do is survive. 20% battery and chance to draw attention to herself uh, for one turn. She has this guts and she has this MP gain. This is basically another battery. This is a guaranteed battery for herself as long as the enemies are able to attack. 
Third skill, 20% quick. Party crit damage up 50%. I thought this was 30. I forgot this was... Oh. Okay. So, 50% uh, crit buff to the entire party. This is a multi-core buff. If you're doing any kind of multi-core that involves crit, Concert you can work with your AoE or whoever else is doing crit damage. Very nice. This is on a five turn. And just terms of solos where she's able to like get the full benefit of being in a grail front, her kit is basically designed for a grail front. And it's funny because the first grail front literally came out after this unit. Which is why like, it's part of the reason why grail, grail front is so prevalent in my head is because this was one of the units I used for, for that first girl front. Didn't want to use Herc because Herc with his Bonsi is almost cheating in a girl front because like how much it caters to his kit. Like this kit is really nice for a girl front. Herc's kit is in basically instant win solo girl front. As long as you play it smart. Magic resist B, 17.5% debuff resistance. Anti-caster, I mean, good, because better refund if she has to fight a caster. Uh, but, I mean, should have better options, especially on this list, to fight a caster. 500, five, sorry, five hit, not 500 hit. Five hit, single target, quick MP. 150% damage against males, curse and burns them. And it's funny that it's these two dots. It's funny that it's these two because this one is Honey Lake and this one is the Jock CE that gives damage bonus with a 50% battery. Now, I think Honey Lake works better with her based on the kit. But yeah, she gets those effects on her MP. Like, if you're not using them, these are obviously nothing. You don't care about it. 150% damage against male enemies. Super effective damage. This is not power mod. This is super effective damage. Uh, you may run 50,000. Uh, already against the rest of her competition. She hits significantly harder at MP5. Against any 5-star or 4-star that does not have an MP buff, you're using Concert U, regardless of whether the enemy is male or not. If they're male, she definitely is hitting harder than these MP, uh, MP1 5-stars. Not when they hit niche, though. Not when they hit niche. Uh, except Bryn. Bryn, sorry. I'm sorry. You have a wide niche, but uh, I would use Concert U over Bryn. Direct competition is Tom Mo. Uh, and she out damages Tom Mo until you get to MP2. Because then MP2 Tom Mo straight up does more damage. And then she also gets Buster uh, farming setup. So, yeah. She is Consort U for single core or, or multi core is replaced by Tama Lancer uh, after MP2. But again, that is, it's not always the case. I, I would say Tama Lancer works better in single core than multi core. So I'd still probably use Consort U. Mm. If her hit counts weren't terrible, I could see comparing her to Kentoki. But at the current time, A, she functions so well. She functions so goddamn well. But she, she has just flaws in her kit, low values for damage. 
She's she's more tanky than she's supposed to be. With some of the stuff in her kit, she's more tanky than she really should be. All right. Next one, Santa Karna. Only problem with Karna is durations for his buffs. Uh, ba low base attack, it's fine. High HP. MP charge, 0.78%. And 10%, 10.2% gen. Double quick, double buster. Works with Ruler Scotty. Yeah, like heavily, heavily, heavily reliant on Ruler Scotty to clean up the issues with his own kit. That is uh, Santa Karna in a nutshell. First skill, three times, three turns, 30 quick and buster up. If you do not have Ruler Scotty, this is a pain. At the very least, the 50% crit damage is static and doesn't go away. Second skill, two hits of evasion, three turns. Star weight, 500%. 100% crit damage for one turn. This is, an, this is nasty. If you are only using him with Ruler Scotty, this is going to let your quick cards bite for a turn. But you kind of need both of them in this turn. Otherwise, you're not going to get that much. Third skill. 20% battery, grants them debuff immunity three times, three turns. So Santa Karna is now a better use case for the servants that stun themselves because he has a battery to go with it, unlike BB. For units like Fran, if you do not have a super scope, this will probably... This will let you actually three turn with Fran because you can give her the 20% that she actually needs. Especially if you do not have mana loading for Fran. Now, if you do have mana loading fully unlocked for Fran, you might actually be able to get away with a 60% CE that gives her like more of what she doesn't have to help like clean up her looping. Because let's not pretend that Super Scope is the best looping CE. It's not. If you're, you'd want Karna to be on the field to do that first and then plug suit him out. Because having, having someone like Fran possibly, uh, like you, if you're, if he's not coming out on, like at the start, it, you're dealing with Fran not looping enough. Her like her loop not being a full fifty. And if that's the case, there's also the issue that this debuff immunity isn't gonna do anything because she's already stunned. He need like for setups like that, he needs to be out on the field first. Then it becomes CE dependent. Magic resist A. Debuff resistance, 20%. Divinity A, 200, uh, 200 damage. Crit damage of buster cards, 12% up. Cool. Anti-saber, I mean, I guess. Like, his niche isn't really class if you're using him as, as a DPS. He removes guts. For any, like, Lancer enemy that has guts, he is... The worst nightmare outside of having full on buff removal, which, as we can see, is not that common. It is very uncommon for a unit to have full on buff removal on a spammable MP. It is eight hit quick. Quick up is the OC. I can't place him higher because this fucking sucks. Literally, if he does not have Ruler Scotty, his damage is not going to be that good. Like, his, he, he's going to lose a lot of his buffs in one turn, and then he's not going to have a card buff to, like, help push him along the way. Like, yes, OG Scotty would help, but that is 
Ruler Scotty helps with more of his kit than just the two quick cards. Him as the support, not a big deal. Him as the main DPS, you're going to need Ruler Scotty and another Scotty, possibly three of them, and just make him a crit monster and him not caring about MP spam with Oberon. Are you fucking kidding me? I didn't put Karna on here too? How the fuck did I... How did I mess this up this badly? Thank God this is going to be an easy fix. For like next year. Because they're all going to be in the folder. Okay, Karna. Not here. If if we did not have Ruler Scotty, he would be here because of how clunky it is. But with Ruler Scotty, he's solid. Oh, oh wait, mm, B. Because Satanta exists. Because of Satanta. He does have quick competition as a single target quick unit. So he stays here. He does have extra utility. Which is why he could go to A. But he is here in B. Because that first skill is a doozy for screwing with people. Kichi. No, Kichi is EX for AoE quick farming because she does not have any welfare competition. There is no other AoE quick servant here that actually can do farming. So by default, Kichi goes up here. But Kichi is very, very likely to get a buff the second that um, she comes into evocation. It's true. She has all the stuff to use in quick farming. She is literally screwed over by the fact of her battery being 20 and not having uh, servant coins for the appends. She is so heavily restricted uh, that you need Nero, Nero Bride currently on both servers is one of her best supports because don't require servant coins gives her even more MP gain, uh, and on <sighs> yeah, like I see more, I get more out of value using Scotty Nero Bride than I do double Scotty. All right, base attack good, almost uh, nine point five k HP, lower but not so low. Throw rate, Sargent, Assassin numbers, and be charged 0.56%. Hit counts, besides the extra count, are average at least. This is a really, this is a good arts card, though. For, like, its value. She's an Assassin. She's more likely than not going to be critting on this. It is going to get her most of her MP back. First skill, 30% quick. Two hits, three turns of dodge. Good. Second skill, 20% battery targeted and star weight. Again, good. Uh, if she's being used in single core, but you are using Nero Bride and you have the append like maxed out, you can put this on someone else and possibly get like a Scott, like OG Scotty battery uh, for extra attack. Very much depends on like a lot of factors, but it is like you can either save this if you're that confident in your looping, or if the no gets weird, you might need this 20 
Abbott. Third skill, 20% attack, 20% MP gen for the party on a five turn. This is the main reason she is looping. It's this trifecta combo. This is the basis for literally all quick loopers in the game. Uh, really post, I don't even know when it started, but like this is the formula. Quick up, battery, MP gain. All like literally all the farming ones have this in common. They need this. This is what quick needs to have. Otherwise, they don't function as well. Passive skills, six percent quick up. Uh, Sergeant Mag magic resist ex on an assassin. And uh, territory creation. This art card just gets even better. Like it really is a good art card in Mighty Chains. This thing is going to lap. You're gonna get so much gauge back, especially because she's fighting Rider, so she gets better gain. Uh, anti Archer. No, I'm for I'm blanking on why she would have this, but it's not the best. But it does come up in multi core. You might see. Or not multi core. You might see archers mixed in with riders, so it's not the worst thing. Seven hit AOE quick MP. Damage to all enemies, removes their defensive buffs, and ups their own quick performance. Uh, one turn activates first, but this is baby scaling. It, it kind of could go higher. Or they make it three turns. I don't know. But yeah, she is Kichi is literally the standard for quick looping. If you do not have what Kichi has, you're not looping. Quick up, battery, MP gain, um, and high hit count MP for quick, meaning above five. Five is like the bare minimum you need to actually be able to loop properly. Unless your name is uh, Okida J. Soji. But they also have like so much other stuff going on for that, for that reasoning. M. Mixa. I was going to try saying out the whole thing and M. H., but no, Mixa. Mysterious Idol X Alter. The first welfare foreigner. If you do, like, this is who you bring to fight pretender bosses now. She has been in the evocation for, since almost the start, I think. She's been in it for a long time. Like, I believe she went to evocation either right before or right after the event on NA. I really did like her story, but this welfare, this tier list is not talking about story implications, story relevancy. This is about gameplay. Attack, 9K, almost on the dot. Could be lower, but again, she's also fighting berserkers with inflated HP. She, she's going to be hitting them really hard anyway. Star weight, star gen are corner numbers, so that good star gen. And if you know me, my preference for a foreigner is for them to be quick. Same for pretender, but we really don't have that. Um, but yeah, MP charge 0.9%. Very good fa face card performance overall. Skills, she has the same bullshit as Karna. So you'd be running Ruler Scotty. The same arguments I have. One attack, three turn for a dodge. 100% crit damage. Power mod against mechanical enemies for three turns on a four turn cooldown. Very short, very high uptime, but mechanical is spotty. Luckily, there are Zerks that have mechanical. There are four of them. But there's also a shit ton of alter egos that have it. And 
she's hitting these for neutral. So not the worst thing, but it you kind of have to be aiming at the berserkers that have this mod to get the most out of it. 20% attack, party HP heal, 2k. Existence outside the domain. This is the enabler for Van Gogh. This enables any servant to turn into a crit servant, no matter what. Two stars return, 4% debuff resistance. Madness enhancement, C. 6% buster up, alt reactor. More debuff resistance brings it up to 21.5. She has the best third append. Anti-Berserker. It can't get better than this for her. Like, even Anti-Pretender wouldn't be as good because you're more likely to bring her to fight a Berserker than you would a Pretender. She gets full class advantage against Berserkers. Or, no, uh, ba basically full class advantage. Uh, charts not showing up. But Berserkers barely hit her. This this is good to have. This is something you'd level because it's just more. It's more free damage. Power mod four hit. Uh, no, super effective. Evil alignment, four hit AOE quick MP damage to all enemies. Twenty percent base scaling on the MP and it goes up to forty. This unfortunately is the same situation as Karna, where that first skill brings an over-reliance on Ruler Scotty and OG Scotty. It is harder for them to... And not only that, Mixa is more heavily catered towards niches, and the first power mod, it's rare even by power mod standards. Like, for... Uh, out, like, in her effective class and no pretenders having mechanical, it hurts Mix's, like, viability for that power mod. Anti-Evil, on the other hand, very, very different story. Uh, a lot of Berserkers are gonna have Evil. And also, just, like, all these enemies, she hits neutral. Until, unless you see Alter Ego, she hits them neutral at worst. There are pretenders that have. I think these are like half the pretenders in the fucking game, too. And then any foreigners. She has a very good, super effective niche on her MP, considering her class. But. It, it's. There isn't a lot of ease of use for this character. This character, you need to know what you're doing if you want her to show her strength. Otherwise, she's just going to be like a crit servant that just hits neutral most of the time. And this is the welfare tier list. Hitting neutral isn't enough because there's a welfare for it. Especially with evocation. You like hitting good neutral numbers just isn't enough anymore. All right, we are on the last stretch. We have 14 more servants left to cover. Da Vinci Ruler. I leveled this servant to bond 10. Solely off her being a loop support. Solely as a loop support. And a little bit of multi-core. This servant is Paracelsus and Asclepius wrapped in one, but they also had to homogenize it. But this servant works with any card type. 
This is a very good servant to use with Yui. Even just for multi-court. If it's in a situation where you're um, cycling buffers, some or Chloe does that, uh, you it's not the hardest thing in the world to like actually get the full value of this unit. Like this servant did get buffed by Yui. You don't if you don't have your own Castoria, it honestly does make it easier because now you're not worried about popping the double Castoria buffs. You're worried about like buff order and getting the most out of uh your DPS with all the buffs Yui provides. I honestly can't wait for this servant to come to JP. Uh cuz it's also easier to use Da Vinci than it is Paracelsus half the time. She gives just so much uh, stuff, and it's not just arts like Paracelsus. Even though he's really good for quick with that MP gain, like quick servants eat that shit up. Da Vinci, more specialized, but still very good for as a looping support. There is no other looping support on this list. Uh, besides, is there anyone else? Yeah, not for looping support. But she is the first A plus that I'm not considering moving to EX. I think she's really good. And I think she does have potential to go into EX. Just not at this point. And I know I'm saying this before we look at the kit, but that is because I use this servant almost daily for four months straight, just using her as loop support and seeing what uh, what the limits were for how she could work with other units. Spoiler, she works really well. Base attack, good for four star. HP, a little low, but she's a ruler. She's tanky by default to compensate. Good values here. MP charge 0.67. It's okay, but her hit counts. Threes across the board. Sucks for the extra attack. It got royally screwed over. I don't even know if extra attack uh, finesse is going to buff this up that much. From, my under from what I remember, it didn't help that much. Three hits is... Fairly bad in terms of like getting a little bit more out of it. So, first skill on the card buff 20% each on a five turn cooldown, and this lasts for three turns. There are plenty of other servants that do this. Elena does this. So does Kron. So, obviously, this was not enough to make her like a good servant, besides her being a ruler support. Second skill, targeted battery, 20%. And here's the looping part, 30% MP gen. What Castoria gives? The same, this is, this is Castoria's skill too. Just with, uh, this is for one person, not the party. Again, good looping support. If your skill is being compared to Castoria, you're in a good spot. Third skill. 20% MP damage, one stave of overcharge, and reduces current attack chance. MP damage, good by default. The overcharge actually does have some things going on with looping. It does affect refund, but only for units that have overcharge that has to deal with it. Uh, Muramasa, for example, the last couple of welfares we looked at that had quick up on their MP. Uh, I think it was just it was Karna at uh, Mixa. Them getting overcharged from one of their supports gives them more refund. Let's them loop better on MP, obviously. Has the skills EX writing twelve percent up for quick item construction A for debuff success rate. It's to land this and that alone. And mag magic resist B seventeen point five percent. Anti alter ego. 
it's there. It's not the best one for her, but I mean, it's there. You can bring her to fight alter egos. I can definitely see you like bring Hephaestion and you just have Da Vinci as a support on their on that team. So she is, she does have a damage AMP. Just saying. So you can do it. You will get some extra damage out of it, but it's again not shouldn't be a focus. So I give Liz so much shit for her uh, skill being as RNG as it is. Da Vinci is a very similar way because all three of these effects are good. But these two specifically, it depends on how good they are for you. Because the 30 stars, if you're not running with quick, um, might be a big difference. You like especially arts teams, you're not gonna have that many stars. Popping this MP is gonna give you stars for next turn. Party battery 20%, reminiscent of uh Ryder Vinci. If your team is at full gauge, this does nothing. Uh I think though it does happen after the MP, so I think she gets 20 back. Not sure on that off the top of my head. I'd I have to test that and uh yeah, not doing that right now in the middle of a tier list recording. MP damage up one turn. So if you pop her skill the same turn you MP with her, she gets a little more MP damage. And if you're in a chain, it can go even higher. I think this unit is one buff away. Uh, but <sighs> she's placed on here, not just because she's loop support, because Shufu does that too. But she does it for all card types, not just arts, which is why she, like, if she was only arts, I would bring her down because Shufu does this same stuff at a lower cost. Cinder Ellie, the contender for best single target servant. And there are two servants that are going to be up for contention. Immediately, you're going to A+. Because this servant has a very documented history of how good she actually is. If you know how to use this servant, and you don't have Ozymandias, you are using her to kill all your, kick all of your cast your opponents in the crotch. Not, and I said crotch, not balls, because getting hit in the crotch for a woman still hurts. So I'm told. So I'm told. I wouldn't know for obvious reasons. Only as a guy. And I think the last time I got kicked in the balls was at work because I was dumb and just stood in front of a child sitting down. Like, of course he's going to kick me in the balls. I, st I still have a good relationship with that kid, too. He's, he's really grown up. I'm, not, I'm never going to let him live it down like he kicked me in the balls. He is, he is literally the only student in that school that actually got me, like, got me the one time. Ah, uh, okay. So, Cinderella, base attack, lower than it could be. If her base attack was higher, oh boy, she'd be, she'd be losing less uh, debates on how good she is. MP charge, 0.87% with two hit arts cards. Her accounts aren't the most amazing, but they're still good, right? There's nothing blatantly wrong. Her MP gain works with these two hit arts cards. Or two, yeah, two hit arts cards. First skill. Three attacks, three turns of invincibility. 30% MP gauge. What Castoria gives. And then poisons herself. 
Second skill, 30% buster, 50% power mod against wild beast enemies. Unfortunately, there are no wild beast casters. So it would have to be wood roads. Oh, fuck. Okay. So super recollections, Liz is going to beat the shit out of wood rose. This is, this is literally the best use case you can bring uh, Liz to fighting wood rose. It sucks that she came out after lost belt six. Also beast four, but you, you like, you're going to be fighting him sooner than you're going to be fighting. Wait, no, maybe. I forgot when Tongue Gusta became um main interlude. But Wood Rose he would show up in um anniversary no an anniversary recollection and the super recollections coming with uh Road to Seven. And also this guy What? Yeah. This guy who came from uh, Gouda Gouda this year. Reduces their defense 10% for three turns, though. Five turn cooldown. Five turn cooldown. Third skill. 30 star bomb. 30% battery. Seals their own skills for one turn on a four turn cooldown. She has a whole lot of demerits, doesn't she? She must not be that good. If this was a 20 battery, you'd be hearing me, you'd be having me say that because she couldn't do a uh, normal buster farming, but ah, <laughs> uh, whether she's buster farming single core or in a challenge quest, she is phenomenal. All this shit being able to be double stacked along with what, what mystic code released with her. Oh my god. This makes this one quick card a lot better. Anti foreigner enemies because she came out in the event with shock. But again, there is no wild beast that's also a foreigner. Oh, okay. No, I stand corrected. Coin Sky of Darkness. Actual use case. Not the right use case, but the act uh, applicable use case. Uh, if you do not have a, a foreigner or an alter ego to kill Koi in dark, Liz can do it. MP, she cleanses all her own debuffs. Uh, this is also why she is used against one of the harder bosses in Lost Belt 7. Not going to bring him up. He gets so much fan art, and I know so many people, I know a lot of people that are thirsty for that, for that guy on Twitter. Like, very thirsty. Like, the, the doujins I would not be reading kind of thirsty. Uh, and she does a charisma that activates first for all fairy tale servants. Of course, Melson gets a buff, both, both of them. Uh, Benny and Ma, but that's another single target. You wouldn't normally use them together. Habitrot is a big one because they are both uh, riders uh, in weird setups with like one, three, six or some shit. Habitrot would be getting the benefits of uh, Ellie popping her MP first. Uh, nursery Rhyme, Daiko. Daiko is, like, good for multi-core, too. Uh, so I could see you running these two together. Uh, Super Bunyan, single core, uh, is single target as well. Voyager, I kind of, yeah, actually Voyager for multi-core because he has an AoE battery for the party. Uh, I forget how big it is. But, yeah, everyone in the party, definitely Voyager is probably the best use case. Because he charges, uh, or Voyager and Habitron.
one hundred percent Ellie is going on here and after and after consideration for everyone else that is in her category, I will decide whether to who to go move up to EX. So I actually have to backtrack a little bit because I just realized who I forgot to actually talk about. And that is Habitrot. In the same sense that Castoria is a free MP5, Habitrot is a free MP5. But you have to beat Lost Belt 6. Uh, Artoria Lily, you can do it at any time. Habitrot has to be through for endpoint. And it only makes more sense to put Habitrot on this list than the free servant, uh, the one through three stars. Doesn't make any sense to rate her on that list. Base attack, it's low for a four star. It's fine though, 8.6, not that low, but it still is low. MP charge, 0.53, three hits. Again, on the lower end, but you kind of don't care with Habitrot. You really don't. Star gen, uh, star weight, normal rider numbers, but it's lower than other riders by a large margin based on stuff in her own kit. It counts, again, good, but four hit extra attack, but she is not, she's not going to be doing her extra attack that much. First skill. Uh, AOE, or sorry, targeted heal, 2K, debuff immunity for one turn, and Sargen. This is on a three-turn cooldown. Holy shit. Like, even if you're not doing her, using her as her intended purpose, like, in its challenge quest, this is nuts. If Habitrot is staying on the field for whatever reason, this is light healing before she uh, dips out. Second skill, 30% arts, 80% battery. If you have mana, mana loading unlocked, this is 100% battery that she can do at any time she wants. Yes, she does 2,000 damage for herself, but if that is a big issue, you just pop this on herself instead of another character. Third skill, actually, yeah, because I'm just doing Habitrot, she is EX, not for farming, for utility, for everything that goes into her kit. Hundred, wave clear, uh, challenge quest support, solo support, uh, multi-core, she can probably do it. This is utility, not AOE arts farming. I have to preface that. Even though she's doing that, I don't want other AOEs on this list to suffer because Habitrot is the way she is. She doesn't have that much self-buffing. She doesn't do that much damage. She's just so goddamn useful. But yeah. Invo, one female ally for one turn. Gives them a guts one time five turns of 5k HP. So Consort you her summer version, the same level of guts duration and value. Healing regeneration buff. They get 2k HP every single turn, removes their dots, and then Habitrot's going to kill herself after this turn. You can... She is so good for multi-core farming that is 3-3-1, because, like, especially all casters, because that means your main uh, DPS can be out on the field, and Castoria is going to give Habitrot all the buffs she actually needs to be able to get through the wave. If your unit is Ozymandias, who has an AoE battery, then you're golden. And then when Habitrot dies, another buffer comes in to buff the shit out of Ozymandias. This, is be this skill alone is worthy of putting her at least in A. It's this combo and her being art that lets her be in EX. She just does so many things, and she does them so well. Writing C, 
6% quick performance. Item construction B, debuff success rate up. Uh, wait, why does she have this? This might just be a lore thing that she has item construction, not necessarily a skill. Uh, anti berserker, even better for her utility. She does more, she kills more enemies in the waves that she has to. If you have not finished Avalon Le Fay, you would not have realized that her MP in game as a playable servant is not the same as it was in the Lost Belt. In the Lost Belt, Star Bomb, Heal per Turn, Star Weight. Basically, what her this part is from her third skill. In game, she has Black Barrel. Three hit arts AoE, 30% MP damage activates first, ignores defense, another utility, reduces her own star weight as a rider. As a rider, she's killing her own star weight so that whoever else she's running with can get all the stars. And she also gets a star bomb. She has just so much stuff, I can't put her anywhere else but EX. I'm pretty sure. I would get roasted if I put her in anywhere else but EX. She is just that goddamn good. Next up, Ram Ranmaru X. This is not a Black Rail Looper. This is a AoE Avenger that would much rather have start from 50 than try to start with Black Rail. Even though she is... Ba technically baby uh, Space Ishtar or more like baby Summer Kama because of the number of hit counts she has serious refund issues um, it comes down to the value of some of her buffs and this base MP game being 0.45 this needed to be higher uh, to get off the reliance of a 50% but mm. You got screwed on it. Base attack nice and high for and she's an Avenger. Positive damage modifier. MP charge again 0.45. And these these are some of the worst uh arts cards if you are not critting. If you cannot crit on these, this these are horrendous. She gets nothing from the face card refund. It is like almost all from the MP that she would get any refund. And even then, it's not going to be that much. First skill, star weight, increases uh, crit damage, removes their buffs on a four-turn uh, cooldown. This is completely targeted. Very good utility. Good for multi-core. Not so much single core. Second skill, 40% chance to charm. Almost no chance. This isn't going to land most of the time. 20% defense, on the other hand, is something. And 10 stars. Not going to do that much. Uh, with this, whoever you pop this is going to get the stars. Whoever you pop this on is going to get the stars. Because 5,000 is a lot. And third skill. 30% arts. 20% battery. And 10 stars again for this. This 20 battery kills her from being able to black rail loop. It true it is truly the nail in the coffin. Because even with the pens, you still have a battery issue. You have a serious battery issue. You're gonna be wasting charge. Charge that she desperately needs because she doesn't refund enough. Not in looping loop farming. Challenge quests, a little different but not a loop farming. You kind of have to... The way your kid is designed is that you don't kill the highest health enemy and you're critting them to get a little bit more refund. That's all. That's how my experiences with uh, Ramru have always worked. If I use her, I'm banking on the fact she's not going to kill the highest health enemy and I do face card refund. Passives. She has the Avenger passive. MP gain when she takes it up 16% and she puts 
party Eva Fres down on the entire party, whether she's on the field or not. Whether she's on the field or not, she uh, applies this. So people like so a unit like Karen that gets a attack buff based on if they're debuffed or not, this affects them. That's why you put Angramainu on the team with Karen. Because he is the lowest cost to enable Karen like that. 2% crit damage from Oblivion Correction. Ren... Man, Ren Manium. Because Servant vs. Bullshit. 3% Arts. 3% Gauge per turn. Existence outside the domain. She has crit, crit Synergy with Van Gogh, so you can turn her into a Crit Servant. Uh, I just don't know how well that will go, but... I mean, Summer Reese is just better. For a crit, but Thumber Reese can also can't use Van Gogh. Magic resist C, 15% debuff resistance, and burn immunity. This is a good one to have as a looper because it means you get overkill quicker on casters, thus more refund. MP ignores defense, ups uh crit sergeant. It's a four hit MP. Uh, this matters more for falling face guards, less the MP, but it, I mean, it's still an AOE MP that gets star gen up. It will gen some stars. Just don't expect like what caster gill can generate. Solid B tier. You can get better than her. You, if you can, like she has a damage issue. If you can use someone that is a more effective class, you should. Other than that, she's not that bad. Santa Martha is one of the best buffing servants in the game. She might also stay in A+, but very possible EX. But the reasoning be the reason being is you like she buffs by traits she buffs a trait so if the enemy does not have the trait you lose value in santa martha you can't bring her that is the big difference of why i wouldn't put her in ex it's not because i think she's bad it's definitely not because she's quick it's because there's a lot of situations where her buffs just aren't going to do anything their power mods are not going to do anything now you can enable her power mods to do something, but that requires another four star. Party cost is going to be a bitch at that point. Oh my god, I'm getting so hungry. I'm gonna have to order food as soon as this is as soon as I'm done with this. I'm definitely ordering food. Eight K attack, twelve point six K HP. She's a support. She's not doing damage. We don't care about this. MP charge 0.66%. She sh has a very good chance of critting on these cards and just being in a situation where she's getting AOE buffed by like Castoria or someone else providing buffs to help her get back to her MP. You have mana loading. Her getting to her MP is not the biggest concern of a lot of people. It's not... It's barely even in your mindset. It counts are good. Extra attack weak, but you shouldn't be going for an extra attack with Martha in the first place. Uh, mostly arts chains or using the quick cards to help with uh, quick chains. First skill, 30% attack for one ally, increases their max HP, and has a static 20% battery. Solid skill on for first... Yeah, solid first skill. Also, Martha's home cooking. I, I don't know. Something about that is just like Martha Stewart. It's just... It's bringing back memories like that. Second skill, Elder Sisters meddling MP seal for one turn to all enemies and 20% defense down for all enemies. Again, solid. Third skill, target, is, uh, target an ally. They get 5,000% star weight. 10 stars and a 30% battery for herself. Kits like this is just like 
Yui, except her battery is targeted, not AoE like hers. Is good still. Arts up 8%. Item construction D. 40, uh, easier to land this stuff. That's all it's for. Fights off just a little bit of mag resist, but sometimes a little bit is all you need. And 12% quick for the quick cards. She will refund better from them. Don't really care about this. She's not about doing damage. But I will say you're going to want this maxed out. MP. 20% attack for the party. Power mod against the demon, divinity, or undead enemy. Ugh, undead enemies for three turns. 50%. Starts at 30, but as long as you cleared through the uh, Santa event or Christmas event, you have 50%. The seal... It's she doesn't get her MP enough for this to be significant. I feel that the healing for this should have been like four or five thousand. Uh, if I'm being honest, with because she's quick, she can't get back to her MP that much. So they really could have made this better. I don't know. Like when Yui is a better healer for quick than Santa Martha. Yeah, like one has an actual quick MP and the arts one is just better. Unfortunate. Uh, with this demon divinity or undead niche, this is one power mod. It's not three separate ones. So as long as they have one of these three traits, you're good. Demon, though, is almost... There are no servants with the demon trait. These are the only type of enemies that would have it. Uh, divinity is a... Very large margin uh, margin of servants. Like a stupid amount of servants have divinity. Makes a whole lot of sense though. And then undead would be a bad niche. But Summer Wu enables it. So she can literally enable any servant to take these power mods. Now whether you're going to want to run both of them in the same party. That really depends on how your team how you're cycling in your team. Uh, yeah, like, it's, it, it's team building at that point. It is team building. If she was easier to, like, enable the niche, I would put her in EX, but because she does need uh, Summer Wu to force it, as a support for a support to do her job because it's different from gray having this because gray is already a dps she already has the undead summer Wu just lets her do her damage you're talking about like five of your units are already named to make martha work like that at least five of the units maybe even all of them need to be like ready to go so she is literally only held back by the fact that if they're not divine, you're going to have a problem setting this up. If you are, if they are divine, you don't have to worry. But it becomes a DPS thing at that point and, and a node thing, not really her. It's not her fault, but she does have to suffer in the rankings, my point of view, because of it. Three, four, nine. On the way out. Tai Sui. Straight up, extremely niche. This unit, if you are able to use him in best case scenario, is a monster for dots. Against six enemy waves with one boss in the middle. And I'm bringing up a specific Morgan Fest challenge quest. He was the go-to option to make that challenge quest a joke. He, like, literally, the dot damage ramp up was astronomical. It was so disgusting. And it just, like, 
It's like you didn't care whether you were um how long the fight was gonna take. More like Tai Sui was just gonna keep looping and making the all like what was it, Spacious Star and Carmilla just take so much goddamn damage from dots. Like he like if the node allows him, he turns dots into not a meme at all. Like not even getting power mod if they're affected by a dot, he turns the dots, the dot itself, into like really good damage. I don't want to put him in higher placement specifically because this is a really specific thing he's doing. It's not the easiest thing to like pull his setup off. It really isn't that easy. You need a lot of specific conditions. All right. Base attack, nice and high at 9.2. Not the highest, but it's still in a good place. HP, good. MP charge, sorry, MP charge, 0.43. It's low. It's low refund, but like I said, he's kind of meant for a lot more enemies than just three. If he can get that, he is going to be cooking. Also, his MP. Like him, like transforming, going from like Pokemon art to like the size of like an, a normal anime protagonist. Yeah, like I, his MP is cool. His MP is cool. Starweight Sergeant Arts, uh, he's an art servant. Don't think too much about it. It counts. They suffer. They suffer forehead extra attack, but the arts cards really suffer. Like these, I really wish these were four hits, like other four uh, point four sevens, but them is the breaks. First skill arts up for the party twenty percent arts MP gen or MP gen for the party twenty percent ten stars per turn. You'd these are AOE, so I understand. Good for multi-core. Uh, I haven't used them that much in multi-core, though. Um, just because I usually have other options. Second skill. Targeted guts. Debuff immunity. Buff removal resistance. One time, three turns. So I talked about Nightingale. And she does this, but she just does it better. Uh, the debuff immunity is nice. But if you're going to use him for this, then to Nightingale is just better. Like, it's only art servants that you might use him. You might use Tai Sui instead of Nightingale because of this. But even that is a stretch. Third skill. And steals all enemy skills for one turn. 30% MP damage and a 30% battery. So he can do multi-core. He's got the kit for it. It's just, is his damage going to be enough to kill the enemy waves? Magic Resist A, 20% debuff resistance. Item Construction C, 6% debuff success rate. And Divinity for Tickle. What's up, Clay? Wrapping up this tier list. He has Anti-Assassin Append. This is a best case scenario. He does extra damage against enemies he would already be doing effective damage against so go to pend have i done the event which one uh are you talking about uh similar remnant or uh case files rerun are you, are you talking about taisui's event uh the answer is yes to all of them uh, and done with all of them obviously the taisui one yeah, I I finished case files. I need to do the challenge quests. Uh but I can't do the challenge quests on stream uh except on the weekends because uh copyright and it uh kills the music literally kills your video. So, Tai Sui's misfortune this happens first. When the enemy is defeated, you put defense down on everyone else in the party. They get cursed. They get evil cursed that amps up the damage by 100%. 
So the more enemy, like, and because this activates first, the enemies he kills with his MP will put all this shit on the remaining enemies. And then his base effect is putting five turns of 2,000 curse damage on the enemy. And he has anti-man attribute. I sweet in an environment where it is not a min turn, where it is six enemies constantly spawning in, and you're able to keep doing this, is it's such high damage. It is you are going to ramp up so quickly for evil curse, and then the defense down is going to let you do even more damage. Like you probably, in an ideal situation. I, you will hit the damage cap or the defense down cap because i i'm pretty sure that is a thing you, i'd have to check the formula but there is a limit for how much defense down will actually benefit you after a certain point it, it just doesn't work for the formula what's up uh shiny you don't want to only if you have no boss no but that's only that's like only for one one of the fights um it like it, it's just whatever just, i think if you're stuck on one of the missions uh i think uh Mino, Nen, nemo scene um you just need to mp that fight I think they just have to MP and then the fight's over. Unless you're trying to kill it. Yeah. Yeah, th it's, that's not the main fight. There's another fight after it. Yeah, and then also, like, if, his, if Guts procs, this isn't a one-time thing, so if you give him other Guts, you can put even more curse on the enemies. So Tai Sui embodies the dots, but it's so rare that he'll actually be able to take advantage of it. So that's that's why I have to put him in niche. I can't rank him up here because it literally depends completely on the node. And also, if the enemy has like super high magic resist, it really does screw with his uh, gameplay. So you do have to but like Phantom of the Opera to completely res shred the higher HP or your targets. So when you're going through all the curses, they're able to actually take the damage or like get all the debuffs landed. All right, my voice is uh, going to start going out pretty soon. Uh, but luckily we have four left. Valks. And... They go up there. They're in, they're in contention for it. But their competition is Sieg. Wait, is there another single target arts? Wait. There are no more. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So Hokusai, you go up here, because you don't have competition in single target arts. Oh. Okay. Well, no, I wasn't looking properly. Hang on. Right. Massive brain fart because of how much we're doing this. All right. Summer Velks. If you did not know how they function. You would see this number and think, oh, dear fucking God, their refund must be the biggest crock of shit I've ever seen. Uh, no, if you're fighting uh, riders, this is some of the most cracked refund, like consistent over 100, closer to 130, 140. So if you throw like berserkers in, they still are able to steamroll. They might not be able to loop uh, three through three berserkers by themselves. They might have refund issues there. But the amount of gauge you can probably give them from other sources makes it not an issue as long as they kill. Base attack nice and high. They're assassins, so good star gen. 
again, bad base card refund. Like if you are not MPing, they do not refund. It is the struggle bus. It is pure and simple the struggle bus. But double arts, double quick works for them. First skill, arts and uh, quick up, 20%. And three times, three turns, 100% crit damage. I mean, you aren't critting that often. So it is nice that you have this when you do need to crit. You are going to hit them very hard. Second skill, 20% attack, one evasion. Everyone in the party gets one attack uh, evasion that lasts for three turns. And any Valkyrie allies get MP gen. So that's Bryn, that's the Summer Valks, and that's the OG Valks. And also these, but you're not, it's not like you can use these on your team. Only if you're if you're fighting against them, that, that will come up. Um yeah. Third skill. Targeted uh 20 battery flat heals and grants 20 stars. So if they again, if they need to crit, they have the option to crit. 8% star gen. Divinity for tickle. Anti-saber. If they pop up in the node, you do more damage. You shouldn't bring, bring the uh, Summer Valks to be fighting just Sabres. 10 hit AoE Arts MP. 40% chance to insta-kill demonic enemies. It's after damage though, so you don't have to worry. It's This is, if you don't kill, they're going to die. Although most demonic enemies are also, ugh, also Earth Attribute. So she, the chance of her not killing demonic enemies is a lot lower than you'd think. It's a lot lower than you'd think. And also you can choose whichever Valk you want. Like there are four different, there are, there are three different actual Valks, which are the same Valks from the Lancer version. And then they also give you three more Valks to go with it. Uh, you know, just moving these around. Just so it's easier to designate them. Okay. I will address we still have more to do, like three more AOEs. Tron Cat. Wait, is that what's playing? Ah, damn it. Ah. All right, like seven more units and then I can listen to music and smoke. Oh, oh my God. I hate being sober this, this long. It sucks. Fucking sucks. All right. EO. Now, this is the servant that a lot of people hype up because back to back, she had a best use case where the enemy, where in the 90 plus plus, the enemy was a moon cancer. It was the event she came out in, and then it was uh, Valentine's. I'm not saying she's a bad unit because she's not. But her value definitely is a bit inflated because she got she there was such a like good use case for her. She definitely is not going to be one of the ones I put in EX just because uh, most of the time she's going to be hitting neutral. And since it is welfares and their welfare is being compared to each other, you're more likely than not going to have other options that will do just more damage in general. 
Like, yes, her neutral numbers are gray. Where is this? Yeah, yeah. Her numbers are really good, and she starts getting into category, like competing with units in their effective class. But this is still like if you're comparing it to, uh, like Muramasa, you'd have to double Muramasa's damage to really compare the two, and that's where EO is gonna like fall flat. Uh. And if you notice, like, um, this is the same reasoning why Ramaru, Ranmaru is lower. Uh, difference is EO actually can Black Rail loop and Ramaru can't. So they're not even going to be on the same tier. EO more likely is going to be an A. Yeah, I'm just going to put her there. I've, I've used her enough to know this off the top of my head. All right, base attack, low, but she's a ruler, positive modifier. It's still low. You would have won it higher. Uh, and it would have helped, like, solidify her more as, as a looper in comparison to, like, get, units getting effective class, but it is what it is. MB charge 0.41. Again, this is a little lower than it could be, like, it could be, like, 0.7. I don't know, it would make the arts cards the way they are make more sense. It counts are fantastic. Arts and quick. Higher than average. The arts cards are literally only held back by a little bit of MP gain deficiency. First skill, 30% arts up. Power mod against divinity. And Inclix curse for all enemies for five turns. Div Divine is a very common niche. It's why like she is being compete she competes with uh units in their effective class. But if they don't have divine. This is doesn't do anything. And Divine is usually not the ads. It's the end boss. So this isn't going to help you get to the boss. It's going to help you kill the boss. Second skill, 30% battery. Star weight on arts cards for one turn. 100% crit damage on arts cards for a turn. If you have arts cards, she will crit. She will refund. And just help her spam her MP. Third skill, 20% attack. Crit damage against wild beast, or increases crit damage for wild beast allies for three turns. Uh, that's these servants. Koin Skaya, uh, Koin Shaku, Cat, Nyelter, the rats, uh, the Brynja, the horse, that is actually Lubu, by the way. Ivan. And Taiga. Out of all these units that you'd actually be using in like multi core, I'd have to like more likely than not, it'd be Nyelter. Nyelter would probably get the most out of this. I think she puts Curse on too. Yeah, she also inflicts Curse, so there is synergy. Uh, and 10 stars. So if you only have the one arts card on the turn you pop this, it's more likely than not gonna crit. If not, you're gonna come get a lot more stars than you ha would have had before. Magic Magic Resist B, seventeen point five percent. Territory Creation A uh, B for eight percent arts up. Poison and Burn debuff immunity, completely, uh, not curse. But these two, if you're fighting an enemy that really slams down the burn, this is going to stop it from... You're just ignoring game mechanics now. Last one. Quick up, 5%. Crit damage. And she gives herself the wild beast trait. So she does get this crit damage. She's not, she's not avoiding it. So you technically do not need to run her with one of the others for multi-core, but the multi-core exists for them. Anti-foreigner is the append. Uh, again, it's just like, if you're doing loot farming and like, it's different than just one class, like they throw in extra class, this is, I guess, just more damage. It's not particularly amazing, but I mean, it's there. You have the servant coins, 
and she's a ruler, it's not that hard to actually level this. So you can be sitting at like this and just never touch it again. And it's just free damage if, if it comes up. MP, four hit AoE, increases MP damage for three turns, activates first, so ramp up. Inflicts evil curse uh, and applies more curse. So like Tai Sui, this is an art spamming uh, cursor. Uh, but she does not get super effective against curse. She does not get power mod against curse. Would be nice, but this is already slamming all different kinds of buffs onto her. Like almost every... The only uh, type of damage buff she doesn't have is super effective. And with how much curse she has, I don't think they're actually going to give her an MP buff that gives her super effective damage. So, yeah, super solid. But there are just a bunch of conditions for her to, like, shoot up to EX. Uh, and she does have to fight against enemies class neutral, which in 90 plus plus may be a, a huge issue of you just not doing enough damage. Next up, cartoon Ellie, or the Ellie that's pretending to be a child. Or it, wait, was it pretending to be a child or pretending to be a dragon? I forget what joke I was making. But this is Halloween this year on NA. First off, base attack. Good. And also, this is the first Welfare Pretender. So if you do not have Oberon, you don't have Hephaestion, this might be your only chance, and you're just going to have to use this AoE as a crit servant. Uh, if you want to, like, be killing Ultra Egos, like, effectively and not be struggle doing the struggle boss on them. Star Weight, Star Gen, Pretender Numbers. I'm a big fan of, like, this is, she's a buster and quick. I love, like, Pretenders having, like, access to, like, good quick cards, good Star Gen, because they can take advantage of it. MP charge 0.77, and this hit uh, arts card matches with it. It's going to refund a good amount. Hit counts are good. Quick is a little better than average. And five hit extra attack. So this servant is a lot more uh, particular in who you'd be using, especially for multi core. There are some units that just. For example, MP damage. There are not that many law uh, neutral. Crit damage. I mean, for, if you're using her with a single target, this one makes a lot of sense for lawful. But that is relying on card RNG for how easily accessible this is going to be. And then chaotic allies is going to get the crit uh, MP gain. All of these are at 20%, 500% star weight, and she grants herself the Mount Liang trait. This only comes up for this skill. Oh, grants the party, sorry. Party gets it. Twenty percent battery for everyone that has that trait. And I don't think anyone Okay, so Koenchaku. Uh, and Yang King uh, get the, have this passive already. Ellie has to give it to people. I'm surprised Feiyun, uh, the writer that came out in this event, did not does not have this trait. But, uh, I don't know, man. I thought he was part of that uh, story, but I guess not. Increases max HP of people that have that trait. And but then she reduces debuff resistance for everyone that has it, and twenty percent it literally removes, basically removes the magic resist a servant has innately. 
So they're going to get debuffed a lot more. Uh, if you are not, if you're in a challenge quest, this might be a death sentence and your units will start getting stunned uh, and just debuffed in general way more. Third skill, quick and buster up 30% each and 30% crit damage. 9% crit damage, arts up, and passive star gen. So our buster uh, MP is gonna gen more stars. This is a bad pen. You're not gonna bring her to fight assassins. She does less damage to them. MP, nine hit AOE, damage to all enemies, reduces their defense after damage. Star gen for a turn makes the whole gr uh, creating crit stars even easier and 10% MP damage. She is not a buster farmer. Uh, I think unless you are doing some summer Chloe stuff. Uh, I think you are able to do double bitch stuff, but her being chaotic means she's not double stacking what could be this because she's not, she's chaotic. Yeah. He's not able to be able to double stack the attack and the card buff, but just not this last effect. It would be nice, but oh well. Uh... I think B is fair because this is not a unit that is user friendly. It's not, there's a lot, it's not that hard to screw up and just really have a bad time using her. Um, team comps for her are also a little scuffed. Uh, like no matter what, yeah, it's go it's gonna be a team comp issue. Um, luckily because she's Buster, uh, mm, yeah, like I think you would need Summer Chloe stuff. I don't even know if you could do uh. Double bitch Oberon with Summer Chloe. Um, it's an experiment thing, uh, but her being a welfare pretender is just nice to have. We are done with this year, and now we have the welfare. The last five are welfares from 2023. Starting off with. Ku Lily Satanta. This is Kentucky's competition for best single target quick welfare. Let's see if his kit matches up. Almost one uh 10k HP, literally one off. Same as Yori. Damn. HP is it's fine. Star weight sergeant. Normal numbers, MP charge 0.83, but not the best hit counts on the arts cards to Jen. His quick cards are going to be getting him a lot of gain. But besides the arts card not being the best, decent hit counts. First skill, 20% attack, debuff cleanse, 20 stars. Power mod against wild beast enemies, three turns. 20% quick up. Third skill. Up crit, uh, chance to increase crit damage. Uh, sorry. Uh, at base, it's 60 for both of these, but when you lower it, it's 100%. Uh, and then the value for the buffs also goes up too. It's a weak version of protection of arrows because he hasn't 
fully learned it. He's still in training from uh, Shisho. He's still getting his ass kicked uh, for trying to go through her panties. Passive skills, 17.5% debuff resistance, divinity for tickle. Anti-assassin, not the best. Yeah, no, not this isn't great on a single target. It's not great. MP, ignores evasion, pierces defense, reduces their uh, defense 20%. Yeah, so he is more a challenge quest slash boss fighter. Kentucky does not have a lot of this stuff, but his numbers are better. He is better at functioning in a quick setup, while Satanta is just like, He is going here, but I think you would use Kentoki more than you would use Satanta. Like everything about his kit feels so modern. His MP feels good. And if we look at the MP damage list, he's he's doing good damage. If he's fighting a wild beast, he's cooking them. Uh the Issue is, and I know we're bringing up Wild Beast again. Um, he's nuking Cat and Nyalter and decimated Taiga. You know what? This might have to do with Taiga harassing. Uh, Older coup in uh, cooking with Emia or Carnival, either one. I feel, I feel that's. I I'm sure OG coup would like to get back at Taiga for being Taiga. Uh, yeah, he is good. He is very modern. He works. It's just that he's not. He's not going to shine the best. It's unfortunate, but. Yeah, he like he is a hodgepodge of the best things from all the other coups. Uh, and it really helps him out. He's a solid single target quick saber. If I was to put him on the list compared to other single target quick sabers, he is more likely than not the best. Uh, yeah, yeah, refund would be an issue, but he would be one of the most solid ones. I think he is significantly better than Karna. I truly think he's better than Karna. Karna has more utility stuff, though. Next, Noctnoria. Noctnoria. Okay, so I am not the best person for this unit. Uh, a lot of the opinions I have on this servant specifically are based on other people's. Um, all I know is that she is a super high buffer, like one of the best supports you can use uh in terms of making units just do more damage but like individual buffs i mean so 9.2k attack good 12.5k good but she heals so you would want this a little higher so she has more room to grow star weight sergeant are foreigner numbers Unfortunately, uh, not the best quick card. She's not Jennings stars, but she's focused on art, so makes sense. Does make sense. MP charge point four one 
with three hit arts, her card refund isn't going to be the best. First skill, debuff immunity, one time, three turns. 1k heal every turn. 20% battery every turn. And 30% battery for any unit that has the My Fair Soldier buff. Slash debuff. What is that? We'll get into that in a second. 20% MP damage for the entire party. And she grants this debuff. It seals skills. It's a special uh, seal, uh, skill seal. It applies to your own team. But your team gets 50% attack and 30% defense. In a challenge quest, they're not dying and they're doing a whole lot of damage. But remember, this is a demerit. If you run her with anyone that cleanses, this is going to go away and they're going to lose the buffs. It is only while they have My Fair Soldier that they get these attack and defense buffs. It's not separate buffs like Yui's. With Yui, if those buffs, if the rainbow buff runs out, you still have the MP damage, the crit damage, and the attack up. Not this. This will go away. Third skill, 20% arts for self, 60% chance to stun, reduce all enemies' defense, 20%, and steals all arts cards for everyone but herself and any Artoria caster. That means Zerk Castoria and OG Castoria. This is a lot of buffs you're providing 50% attack, 20% MP damage. And 20% defense down. That is a lot. Uh, it scales well with any kind of card buffer. But it's the skill seal. If you're running with... You, you shouldn't be running her with Buster Servants. You shouldn't. This is a death sentence to buff, Buster Servants. And if you're running with Tomo, it's a de like almost a death sentence to Art Servants. Because they're not going to get their cooldowns. And, yeah, it's, she's a different type of buffer, though. She's not traditional, and that's not a bad thing. Debuff resistance, 20%. Star gen, everyone gets 20% up. Four stars per turn, five gauge per turn. She, even though she is a foreigner, she does not have existence outside the domain. Thus. He does not get crit synergy with Van Gogh. Anti-Lancer. Don't know off the top of my head. NP. Damage to all enemies. Further reduces enemy defense by 20%. Cleanses her own debuffs. And 5k heal base. Up to 15k. Kiara. Gets this way after a lot of overcharge. This is not, it is not outside of the realm of possibility to be getting this uh, 10k HP heal. Now, again, I do not have that much experience using this unit. I just don't. Uh... She's not an extremely niche. I'm putting in her A tier. She is a very good buffer. Um, I would say, I wouldn't say she's comparable to San Santa Martha though, because Santa Martha provides just more for the party, uh, and doesn't mess with cooldowns. I think, like, I think more people would rank her lower because the skill seal is very annoying. Um, and if you need to not, if you need the skills, you can't pop the skill. Simple as that. Last three. And this is not going to show up. Okay. Saiga Magaichi. Yori. 
and Nemo. So, yep. Okay, let's start with uh, Psycho. This is not a single core farming unit. This is a, I would say, closer to challenge quest uh, slash raids where you are not able to kill in one turn. Uh, whether that's because just health gate or like they have a guts or something that you, it takes hard RNG to like worry about it. This is where Psyche is going to shine. In three turn scenarios for raid bosses against like sing a single enemy, she is going to shine the most. Can you bring her to do multi core? Yes. But part of her kit relies on getting hit, and you can't get hit in multi core if you want to still clear in three turns. Not unless you're using Bazette. And even then, you would not use Bazette with Psyka. Base attack, it's just slightly under 9k, not the biggest deals, biggest of deals. Uh, star weight, star gen, normal archer numbers, MP charge healthy at 0.75, and the hit counts for this unit are fantastic. Double quick, double buster, user with OG Scotty, regular Scotty, any combination of the two with another support. Could be Oberon, could be one of the another Scotty. All depends on you and what you are trying to do. First skill, evasion. Ignore evasion for three turns. Ups party crit damage by 30% for three turns. And a 30 star bomb. Very nice. Second skill, 30% buster, 30% quick, and 30% crit damage. Just more damage. Like fits whether you're using Ruler Scotty or OG Scotty or three of them, she gets benefits to all her cards that are affected. Third skill, evasion for a turn, taunts for a turn, and increases MP gen when she takes damage by 50% and a 20% battery. 20 battery, little annoying, but you pop that to help you to get the MP. You don't, uh, it's, the, this battery is not a turn one battery. Like, you wouldn't normal looping or this would be you pop the Scotty's batteries and then you pop this on the next turn uh, based on refund. Uh, if, you're, if you have enough gauge for the next turn, I would pop this. Uh, like If you know your next turn isn't going to have the most gauge, you should be popping this. Don't worry about the battery. If you're getting hit a shit ton of times, this part is going to net you more gain than this 20 battery because your cards will also refund just as much. 12.5% debuff resistance. Independent action A for 10% crit damage. Item construction, guns, arts up, arts crit damage. It just makes this one card better for a mighty chain. Anti-Berserker pen, it matters even less whether you're bringing her to fight a Saber or a Berserker. You're just going to do it better. And Berserkers have more inflated health pools, so that's where this would come out more often. Third, uh, MP. 10 hit single target quick. Damage to one enemy. Reduces their crit attack chance. Ups quick and buster up. 20% base for one turn. She does not have ramp up, but with her MP and her skill two, she has mana burst levels for that turn for both quick and art, quick and buster, the two cards that she's going to do the most damage with. I know that. Actually, switch the movies. Psycho, I think, is just... Yep, we're almost done. Nemo, Captain of the... 
Stop, Golden. Change your name again. All right. Saika, I think, is better built than Satanta. I think he's really good. He's better than most of the single target quicks for Sabres, but Saika, to me, stands out as a single target uh, unit. Like I om I'm kind of do want to swap these two now. So I go over Ken Toki. But him having that 50 battery is just really helpful. It makes him able to use more CEs. Yeah, Psyka Psyka can go up. Uh but I Ken Toki, because he's a rider, he's fighting casters and his refund j can just get really stupid. Uh, and he can just spam his MP. Mm. Which list? This one, Psyka. This is Psyka. Hmm. Actually, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna swap these two. I I think Saika is better than Kentucky. If he gets his skill three buffed or one of his other skills buffed, I'll consider swapping. But I think Saika beats him out based solely on like he doesn't have the crit damage capability that she does. She has like so much more crit damage. That battery is nice, but she can also get the amount, the refund she needs. All right, funny that you you showed up here literally right before Nemo. So let's talk about Santa Nemo. He was able to like easily multi-core farm his own ninety plus plus node in the event he comes out in. I have used him in testing, and he loops just enough so the odd cases you just have another su uh support give him a little bit of charge he's not going to need that much at most uh 20 from another unit to get him back over the edge base attack low mp charge 0.51 it's built he's built to be able to loop just enough just enough in 333. Three. It counts are all good. Uh, Art suffers just a little bit, but he is a rider, so he technically should be critting. Although that is uh, not that is not the easiest thing to be getting him critting. I think. Remember, right? It's not the easiest thing. First skill, MP damage up twenty percent. Party crit damage up twenty percent. Attack up 20%. And if you are running with a group servant, 20% attack for three turns. Group servants are literally servants that have multiple characters coming in and helping to do damage. Yo, know, Scurry, Okitan at certain uh, ascensions, not third because that's when she goes back to being like a uh, uh, counter guardian, but first two while she's in the swimsuit and holding Rengoku. When they're in their child form, that's when she gets this. It's literally characters that have two, two or more characters showing up. Thus, Sakamoto Ryoma was the main character I was using in the multicore with uh, Nemo. Because they were getting the attack buff for that final wave. This is a phenomenal multicore buff. If he can get away with the multi-enemy nodes without popping this, your main damage buffer almost got mana burst levels of a buff. Second skill, 3k guts, debuff immunity, 10 gauge per turn. This is your lowest priority to level because the 10% per turn is non-conditional. He just always has it. 
Third skill, 30% arts, one attack, three turns for the entire party, and 10% battery. Him not having an actual battery off the rip is a bit of a problem. It's not that much of a problem, though, because of his refund. He's able to black rail loop. He's just like, and he's able to get away with this stuff. As long as he's effective in his niche, that's all that really matters. Quick up, 10%. Divinity for extra tickle. Sea God's protection. Arts crit damage up 6%. Increases damage taken or reduces damage taken by 300 on a water side or void space battlefield. Water space, water side going to be more common. Rarely you're ever on void space. Anti saber, he is an AoE. This might come up and you just get free damage. His refund, he's able to loop 100%. Uh, I don't know how you compare a single target refund to an AOE unless that single target has like 15 hits on their arts MP that doesn't have gimp gain. If we're talking about face cards, uh, he's a looper. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, like he's a looping. He's a looping. Servant, not a crit servant. Nemo could get away more with being a crit servant. Yeah, no, straight up, it's lower. There's no reason it would be higher, and he has a bigger bat. He has bigger batteries. Not gonna stop. Yeah, I know. MP. Four hit AOE, arts, enemy uh, skill seal, one turn. Damage, power mod, no, super effective damage against evil alignment. Caster. Casters. Not too many casters. It's about, it's like, Seven, eight effective casters, and then a lot of berserkers. A lot of the berserkers or enemies he'd be fighting neutral because they're on the node with a caster enemy. He's able to do his job, uh, but he is not. He's in B only because his teams are not flexible. Uh, he has to either start with a 50% charge or if his refund isn't enough, there are some issues. Uh, also, his one-turn buff is going to be an issue. Just gem damage in general. All right. Now we have... The contender with Ellie for best single target buster. Because he's definitely going to be on this list for this. Miyamoto Iori, the Samurai Remnant collab unit. This unit, I literally put Brave Liz down because of his existence. She went down in value because he exists and has the same numbers without one turn bullshit. Having an actual, having a battery, not having, having a skill that is a literal detriment to his gameplay. Base attack, just like Satanta, one under 10k. Star weight, Star Gen, Saber numbers, MP charge 0.42. He is critting on these cards, or he should be critting. Re refund doesn't really matter, but he's going to do good damage. Hit counts are all great. Quick card is weak-ish, but not that bad. Any six hit extra attack. Extra attack would really pop off his 
base gain was uh, higher, but them's the breaks. They have to make uh, changes. First skill, 500% star weight, 30% crit damage, 10 stars every turn, and mental debuff resistance of 50%. Stops a whole lot of bullshit from affecting him. Second skill, 30% battery, 20% attack, 20 stars, and burns enemies. Enables Honey Lake. Not, not much else to th for this. Third skill, enables Yui for him. 20% uh, rainbow buff, 500 damage cut. It's nice to have, but it's not going to save you from an MP or anything. But this dodge will. Two attacks, three turns. His whole kit is just so modern. And some of these... I'm not going to say... Uh, I'm not going to say he has multiple different skills wrapped into, mul into his different skills. But, like, collectively, he kind of does have, like, four or four and a half skills with all of this shit if you put it in a vacuum. Like, you can probably make four skills off it off this kit. Four or five. They crammed a lot of stuff into this servant to make him good. Passes. Magic resist B. Debuff resistance of 17.5%. Riding B. 8% quick. Anti saber. It makes sense. He want he just wants to fight strong people. And then the final and then his MP double Subami Gaishi. Six hit single target. Ramps up quick and buster for three turns. Activates first. Gives himself ignore evasion. And star bomb. The overcharge is literally the worst part of his kit. He comes without gimmicks. And putting him in a vacuum without these five-star single-target sabers, he does really, really good for himself. Like, I would pick him over an MP1. No, not even an MP1. I would pick him over Sigurd pretty much every day unless I'm fighting a dragon. If it's a dragon lancer, Sigurd's probably getting used, but even then, I might even choose Siegfried over him. But, yeah. He puts a lot of these units... Like, if your Saber Servant single target is not MP2, Iori's beating them out. E even some MP3s, like Dio Scurry, he's kind of beating out the MP3, although they just have better refund. But in a buster situation, that is literally a non-issue. So what this comes down to for Ryder, Liz, and Iori, I am looking at the five-star competition. There isn't that much for Sabres with cohesive kits that aren't one-turn based. Musashi is the king of single-target Sabres. She's the strongest. But a lot of it is gimmicky based on how many hits she can do and the fact she got that MP buff. Iori is just solid. So he is going on here. Now, last thing. Or two more. We have two more placements. AoE, arts, and single target arts. Which of these, for this, what do what? Which one do I think is better? I think too much is put onto the insta kill for Shiki. Insta kill rarely ever comes up, so 
to a certain extent, her overcharge doesn't do anything. And then getting back to her MP is a lot harder for her than it is Hokusai. Hokusai also can boost up her crits. Shiki has good base stuff, but she does need a little more staying power to keep up with the three turns. In raids, it's fine. She kills. It's not a big deal. But in instances where you cannot just one shot, you don't have black rail, you don't have all the supports to really ramp up her damage, Hokusai is going to look better. Summer Valks versus Sieg. Ah. Uh. I will say, if you are stuck without buffs for either one of these, you're going to have a better time with Sieg. Yeah. Because when your buffs run out, all the units on your side of the field are going to be casters, and the enemies are going to be um, assassins. So... You'll be more tanky to survive until the next, until buffs come back. While Valks, they, ha they are fighting riders. So if their buffs run out, their face cards aren't going to be doing that much in terms of refund. So they might not be even able to get another MP. And then their support casters are going to get nuked. Your Castorias, your Tomamos, they're going to get decimated. In almost instantly, they're gonna get crit to death by the riders. So Sieg, because of meta reasons, is put up higher. I do enjoy using Valks a lot. Um, and also I might be a little biased because on Sieg's refund, because I haven't really been using him with double cast story, it's been with another support to do the farming, and he was still able to get it done. Um, so I honestly might be underselling Sieg's refund. I know it's really good with double Castoria. I'm used to using him with more scuff teams, but I still kind of stand by this. Or, yeah. He, like, he definitely needs buffs, um, but he is the easiest to get looping in his class that has effective damage. Like EO, if, if she wasn't a ruler and had a specific class, she was like super good against for farming. She would, they would probably swap. Teague would go down in a Valks would stay in a plus and EO would go to a EX, but her being a ruler is actually a detriment when we're talking about welfares because there are other AoEs on this list. If you bring EO to fight assassins, you're not going to have a good a time as with Sieg. You wouldn't bring Sieg to fight against Riders. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think this is good how it is. Uh, yeah, I don't have complaints about this. I feel like this was a long ass recording. I'm ready to just relax now. What if I have? Berserkers. Got it. All right. Uh, I will see you guys. By the way, this is just a recording, not stream. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next tier list is going to be low stars, and that will be split across. 
I might even start it on Friday because that me sitting through that is going to be painful because that is going to be like 80 servants. All right. And the recording. Oh, uh, I'm too, I've been sober for too long. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.